the ninety meter. <laughs> Thank you. So this is indeed quite comfortable. This is something that we learned during the pandemic to cooperate here virtually. So in the chat, there is the link and it's very simple. Just click on it and then you can give your feedback. It seems we are stuck on 17, Stefan. How many responses do you have so far? Okay, so I am from Bonn, I see 29. <laughs> <laughs> We still need more people to answer a question because it will inform our interaction as we go along. So, might take a while. We are 93 participants. Wonderful. We are getting more and more. So, find in the chat the link to the Mentimeter. Just click on it and then you are in and you can give your answer. Okay. So we are we are somewhere in the middle, Jackie. Look. Okay. So maybe we moment. start the second question. 2.8. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. So Gaetano or Carlo, maybe we look at the second question as well. So our second question looks at how familiar you are with the common monitoring, evaluation, and learning methods in multilateral collaboration as well. Oh, now it's getting quicker, nine, 10. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, and we reached the 100 participants already. Awesome. So. 20, yes, great, you're getting, you're becoming familiar with the Mentimeter. <laughs> awesome, and just to also let you know that we plan to have a very interactive meeting. So even as much as we are on webinar mode, we are going to listen to your questions, to uh, read out your comments, please use the chat facility uh, on your screens as well as the Q&A uh, button. So the part of the uh, meeting, please be able to engage with us because we will constantly be monitoring what your questions are and revert on them or pick up your comments. Uh, where we are, are at right now, Stefan, how many people on our second? Oh, we have 105 now already. Awesome. And uh, roughly one third uh, responded to the Mentimeter. Come on, we can do this better. Look in the chat, please, <laughs> colleagues. We have yeah. their link, just click on it, and then you can give your feedback. How familiar are you with common monitoring and evaluation and learning methods in multilateral collaborations? We try to find this out um, so that we can collaborate uh, a bit closer together. And this is indeed the intention with the five good mornings that we are organizing here. So please um, join the process and contribute. Thank you very much. We still have a few minutes. So for the few who've not responded, please do so. In the chat, you can just keep the chat activated um, in our good mornings together here because uh, we will constantly uh, upload there the link to the Mentimeter. Uh, it's very comfortable. You don't need any code or so. Just click on it and then you can give your feedback. Great. Hey, 42. Awesome. 105 participants. So we need at least 50. <laughs> so eight more people. <laughs> uh, just give it so that we have at least a 50% feel of what our audience know or do not know. How familiar are you with common monitoring, evaluation, and learning methods in multilateral collaborations? We're asking this because this is indeed a key element for uh, the future platform that we are working on. Um, and in that sense, it is good to see how many of you are familiar with it and also with the meaning um, of such an approach for a long-term perspective. So 107 participants, but 
we didn't reach half of them <laughs> who gave us a feedback. So let us again uh, go here into the chat. Please keep your uh, chat box uh, on the side. Here for me, it's on the right side. And there you will find from time to time the Mentimeter link. Just click on it for those who just joined us and give us your feedback. Okay, we are on the last minute. Actually, mm -hmm. we've done slightly two minutes more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll get a feel of what our audience has. Uh, our colleagues at CIAM would help us at least generate a general feel of the familiarity of the group. But then we also need to move. So I don't know, if, Stefan, if you have a word or two on our responses. Um, well, so far, no. It's it just gives an, an impression. I would say it's a it's a bit half half in the middle, as you see, two point five. Um, it's just good to know who is here and perhaps where we can focus later on uh, also in, in the discussion at the end. So I would say let's um, move ahead. Uh, thanks a lot to Bari and uh, let us share the screen again. Back, thanks a lot. I will enlarge if I But I also know if someone my... say on the chat that uh, the participants are out of process. Uh, Maybe just elaborate what that means. Uh, were you not able to use the Mentimeter or what was the difficulty in using it? So just inform us so that we are aware and see how to go around that. So the next uh, session is really a part where we need to get to know you better. And for this reason, we would like you also to use your chat to put in your name, uh, highlight what sector you are coming from. <coughs> Uh, the sectors would require whether you're from the private sector, uh, whether you're a farmer or in agribusiness, whether you're from the NGO sector or the funders sector, or policy making or decision making or a scientist, scientist or researcher. But then that's the dis to distinguish between policy maker and decision maker. We need decision makers to be either technocrats or people who lead in terms of formulation of decisions within their spaces and their sector of influence or organizations and policy making, either working with the ministry or uh, any other relevant policy making body in your different countries. So just put in your name, your sector, institution and your country. This will help us also know where our um, focus of engagement should be based on the interest we collect uh, from your input. So on the chat, you have a few minutes also just to let us know who you are. So I'll take a few minutes uh, for you to be able to do that. Awesome. And now, wow, yeah, they're coming. 113 participants. Chucky, look at this. Awesome. Elizabeth Hagen came in. Frank Wikucha, mm -hmm. from both from Ghana. Kibatik Sin Alavode from Nigeria. And Mary Mwangi from Kenya. Tim Frey, our Tim colleague Frey. also, we've noticed you. <laughs> Agnes Kirabo from Uganda. I think we've met Agnes before. Dafna Designy from Israel. And from Egypt also, I have Sharin. Alum Daisy from Uganda. Alum, you've forgotten to put us what sector you work in or are in. Mm -hmm. So name, sector, institution, and country. So many people. I'm very happy that we found together today. Toto from South Africa is there. Awesome. I have also Viola. Afi Malungu from DR Congo. Mm. Oh, I have someone from Macedonia. Welcome mm. on board. <laughs> Endasho Mugesi from Ethiopia is here, and Mukaya Jona Nalebo from, we don't know, a world citizen. <laughs> also good. <laughs> yeah. Good morning also to Antoinette Sala from Senegal. Aliso Judith from Uganda. Oh, yeah, and someone says they have a sound problem. Uh, just to let you know, because we're using the conference. A facility of Zoom. Uh, you do not have sound or video uh, capabilities, but please use your chat. 
so your mic or your video will not work, but that's why we're using the chat um, facility to be able to interact. So colleagues, please also scroll a bit through the chat uh, just to see who is all around. And this is also a learning in the pandemic, I would say, uh, virtual cooperation, um, how to get in contact and just to see how many people are interested here, in this case, in the design of a future platform for the AUEU partnership on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. I am very much impressed. Uh, we have now 100, 112. We, we missed one. We were already at 113. Uh, but however, that's great. Look in the chat who else came. Uta van Bellingen from Belgium. Nelson Oijo from Kenya. We have Roger Olume from Ministry of Economy in Cameroon. And he's the PPP focal point. So private, I'm assuming PPP is private um, public partnership. Before Kekezi is there from Ghana, Foundation for Environmental Watch. Mohamed Abdelai was from Mali. Denise Gida from Germany. Kemeni Kambiet Teres Lionel from Cameroon, policymaker. Charles Masembe, Uganda, and many more. Great. Um, yeah, and 117. We are getting more and more. Excellent. So if you just joined us, what we're doing right now is to indicate your name, sector, institution and country on the chat box. And I also mentioned that your chat facility would be the best way for us to engage in the course of this Good Morning Fora until later on when we'll be able to engage you uh, with oral um, interaction. But at the moment, we are really happy to be able to know you. We also want to guarantee you that your information is actually kept confidential, um, both from the process when you started to register from for this uh, forum, as well as uh, the names and institutions and countries that you're listing right now. So we'll not use that information for any other purpose, except for the purpose of this Good Morning Stakeholder Forum. So thank you. I think as we go on doing that, we'll continue collecting the names of our participants. I just want to let you know that our first Good Morning, yes, Stefan, I think we can go to the next slide so that we'll have a little more time with the other sessions as well. But just to let you know that we are dealing with uh, this particular good morning is looking at alliance building from model to practice and I hand over uh, to Stefan to introduce the speaker. Thank you. Okay, Thank you yeah, sorry, much. big one, sorry. Much, uh, sorry, who is, uh, please mute your microphone. No. Please mute your microphone. So uh, the speakers and facilitators today are Mr. David Akana from uh, CORAF, which uh, is an institution active in West and Central Africa. Mr. Belko Diallo from uh, the Waskal Network active in Western Africa. Um, furthermore, we have Henning Knipschild from the BLE in Germany. We have Mrs. Prudence Makura from the NRF South Africa, and we have Mr. Khalil, uh, Khalid, uh, Khalil, sorry, there's a typo, Khalil uh, Sangare from SILS in West and, and North Africa. And uh, the agenda for today is indeed we start with a presentation um, about from model to practice, what is the background um, of these activities uh, that we are conducting currently um, so uh, that we introduce to the issue of the five good mornings and the way ahead to a common AU EU platform for research and innovation on uh, food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. This is followed then by a presentation about a general theory of change and impact pathway from Khalil Sangare from uh, SILS for the West Africa EU Alliance short wire. This will, uh, fall, will be followed by a presentation from David Akana from CORAF, uh, a communication concept 
for the cluster mechanism of a platform. And uh, Belko Diallo will give a presentation on a theory of change and impact pathway uh, focused on data and knowledge management. And then um, number five, Dialogues for Action, Prudence Makura and Henning Knipschild uh, will lead a discussion and uh, give some insight in the field of Dialogues for Action. So um, let's come to uh, the first presentation and I will give this first presentation. Uh, so it's a, a pleasure uh, again to have you all here and let me just manage here the devices from Zoom uh, to see. We are 119 person, that's excellent. Uh, we are very happy to have so many here um, around. Um, from model to practice, uh, what does that mean? Um, we are dealing here, and this has to be said at the beginning, with an extreme big region. The AU-EU region consists 1.5 billion people uh, in 82 countries. So we are confronted with a big diversity of actors. And um, one major point is, and, and we uh, will highlight this constantly in the development of uh, a common approach for the collaboration that we have to build on the sovereignty, on the responsibility and on the creativity of each of, it, of its actors. So we are very much uh, underlining the aspect of inclusivity in this process. So which model, What's, about what are we talking uh, here? So we will start with that. Uh, we have a long-term vision for the AU-EU platform. And um, to keep this uh, short, we have a meta governance model, which is called the program and innovation management cycle meta governance model. We have already an idea for the platform's process in the future, therefore it's a long-term vision, and we are already working on the next milestone and we come later uh, to that. So first, um, the meter governance model. First of all, it is uh, a long-term approach. Uh, and um, okay, something happens here with my slides. Uh, it's a long-term approach and um, it is therefore uh, a cyclic program that we consider as the approach uh, to be followed in the partnership. The second aspect is um, clustering. Uh, what is the role of clustering in a network approach so that we do not follow a centralized approach for the collaboration, but a very diverse approach of networks uh, around clustering processes. So um, the, we are working already in the project with uh, project clusters, uh, but we also intending to uh, motivate or to build on existing scientific clusters, to motivate to build clusters or to build on existing clusters. And furthermore, um, because these clusters do not necessarily have to be scientific clusters, mm -hmm. clusters of expertise, which might play a role more on the local level, uh, could be uh, considered to be established if they do not exist already. Another category of clusters that we have in mind is uh, our clusters of our clusters of interests. For example, we are working on a private sector cluster in the North Africa EU Alliance region. Uh, or the or funders consortia, which are also clusters or broader um, funders network as a cluster and clusters of decision makers. In the mentioned region, and I see now here the technology doesn't work as it should, but uh, I take it as it is, we have to deal with a big diversity of actors, with a big diversity of clusters, therefore, as well in the AU-EU region. Again, over 82, no, exactly 82 countries um, are addressed with this approach here. And these clusters also have to be linked with each other. Um, and uh, therefore we are questioning how to establish and how to maintain clusters, how to establish a cluster network so that these clusters are interlinked and which cluster mechanism is needed so that um, this interaction um, can go on within a cyclic program approach. Um, a cyclic cluster coordination, what, what does that mean? So in a, in a program cycle, what is exactly the role of the clusters? 
Um, and let's have a look how uh, a program cycle um, should start. It starts with a prioritization process. We have to find out what exactly do we want? Uh, what is the situation? Where are the problems? Uh, what are potential ways uh, to deal with these problems? And for that, we are developing a theory of change and impact pathways. And together with this, because um, in such a program cycle, it is relevant uh, to monitor and to evaluate uh, the activities, we have to work also on a monitoring, evaluation and learning concept. And in an ideal case, um, this theory of change and impact pathway is built um, on the expertise from a cluster network and not just uh, written by a small group, a small elite um, of, of experts. So here already you see at the beginning of a program cycle, we are intending to be as inclusive as possible. The next um, phase in the program cycle, as we consider, is, is the so-called investment phase, the blue phase here, number two. Also here, um, a network of clusters is very much relevant. The investment into projects uh, for research and innovation and capacity building uh, will be made uh, by a funders consortia, but also scientists and, and any other expertise um, experts are investing um, in these projects. The private sector could be uh, a part of this investment process um, and other actors. Um, so in this phase, we consider projects to be established that uh, a funders consortia agrees on a theory of change and impact pathway, including indicators for the outputs, outcomes, and impacts um, of uh, such a program. Um, and they then conduct uh, these, these projects. And um, by the way, the Leap Agri project, which some of you might know, this is an ERANET uh, co-fund, LEAP stands also for Long-Term European African Partnership. Uh, their 27 projects are funded and they are right here now in this investment phase. What comes then? And, and this is the neglected part in multi-stakeholder programs. And that is where we are pointing at. From the prioritization to the investment, this is a normal um, programs process. But then what happens later? How do we transform um, the research output into solutions? How do we coordinate uh, the communication, the dialogues between science and end users? And we underline, we are talking here about dialogues and not only dissemination of research results because science also needs the feedback from the ground, so to say, um, to raise the right research questions. Uh, so, this following part after such projects has been neglected in the past and we are addressing that. How do we monitor outcomes and impact, which is more a long-term process? And how do we design learning? How do we learn um, after such investments? So um, allow us just to have a, a brief excursion. What is a theory of change and impact pathway? It's um, in principle, um, a very simple instrument uh, out of uh, two elements. We um, uh, have the situation analysis, uh, which means um, it has to be clearly identified what are the problems and what are the causes of the problems and what is the overall context. That's the beginning of a theory of change, you write a situation analysis. The second uh, element are the roadmaps. And these roadmaps, um, are, and uh, allow me also here, I have, I'm a bit struggling with uh, these devices here. The roadmap consists of um, a research agenda, a research and innovation agenda and a capacity building agenda. This has to be um, defined together uh, with funders, but also uh, the experts and also the desired impact pathway. And as I mentioned already, the impact pathway consists of the outputs that are desired, the outcomes and the impact. And this is done in the research and innovation agenda, as well as in the capacity building agenda. And once this has been uh, fixed in a, in a, in a document, um, one can use the monitoring, uh, evaluation and learning concept, which includes the indicators for the outputs, the outcomes and the impacts. 
And to be very much on the safe side, and just to clarify uh, that we are all uh, in the same boat, what is what are outputs, what are outcomes, and what are impacts? So output is quite simple. It's This is the output of a research and innovation capacity building um, project. This is on, on the short term. On the midterm, uh, outcomes are related to the changes in behavior, actions, activities, and relationships between uh, stakeholders. So this is more on the midterm. Um, the impact then, and this is more on the long term, um, this is defined by changes in uh, economic, social, and environmental conditions um, that a program, a program cycle is aiming at. So having this set um, about uh, what is a theory of change and impact pathway, what is the first phase of a program cycle as, as we um, envisage that as a model um, in the second phase, the investment. So from prioritization to investment in a very transparent process. The next step is indeed the valorization uh, step. Um, at the end um, of uh, research and innovation and capacity building projects um, where uh, the results are there, an output analysis uh, can be conducted and recommendations can be formulated uh, to improve um, our food systems. And uh, for that, a communication concept has to be at hand and will have to be developed further because time is, is, is changing things. People are changing. So a communication concept is also always a concept in progress. And the suggestion also here is to build on a big diversity of actors, organized, coordinated uh, in clusters and in a cluster network. And this is where, um, as I already mentioned, the LEAP Agri project with 27 funded projects. Um, at the end of this year, this uh, project will come to an end, LEAP Agri. And um, then the question is what to do with the outputs. And um, we don't have a clear answer for that, even though that in this um, call for proposal, it was already written that uh, the researchers will have to um, uh, consider and describe clearly how to communicate the research output. But again, uh, the long-term perspective on this um, has not been uh, developed. That is why we suggest here in this model to consider this as a, as a, a very important phase in the program and innovation management cycle. The fourth uh, phase of this cycle is the so-called application phase. And um, what happens there is indeed um, the exchange between science and end users of knowledge. And end users of knowledge, these are um, not only farmers, not only um, any company um, in, in the food systems. These are also NGOs, these are decision makers, and the scientists themselves, they are also end users of knowledge. So in this application phase, um, it has to be considered that a lot of uh, exchange is necessary, is relevant, dialogues have to be coordinated, and um, in parallel, an outcome analysis and an impact analysis have to be conducted. So also here, um, uh, having in mind the big diversity of actors, it is of highest relevance to have a well-coordinated cluster network uh, in which information, knowledge can be fed in, but where also knowledge can be extracted um, where needed. And this is then needed at the end of such a cycle, uh, which is considered to be at, uh, let's say, 10 years. Um, together with uh, an impact analysis. And then the question, how do we learn from this process to continue this process? So that is the model. Four phases, prioritization, investment, valorization, and application initiated with a theory of change and impact pathway, accompanied with uh, monitoring, evaluation, um, and learning uh, activities. Uh, supported by a cluster network. The main principle that is suggested here to be followed is form follows function. This is quite a very old principle from architecture. What does it mean here? Each of these phases in a program and innovation management cycle have a function, has a function. So the question now is how do we design, how do we form, which, which form do we want for the services that are needed in these phases? And which form do we want 
for a coordination infrastructure in general, because that is what is suggested here. Um, and what are the next steps to grow this platform, to grow such a coordination infrastructure? Another point that we want to mention with regard in the, in the context of uh, the model, um, that this platform that we are envisaging, it is a long-term growing process and it is a growing process in particular for the cluster network. And learning in this context means that after a program uh, cycle, when we um, have learned what, what comes next and, and therefore this monitoring evaluation and learning points, to the continuation of the partnership. And this means to uh, maintain a coordination infrastructure beyond a program. It means to maintain a cluster network beyond a program and also to establish a knowledge management and communication framework for the long-term perspective for the succession of, of many program cycles and transparent monitoring, evaluation and learning process. Um, we want to also share the roughly the ideas that uh, we have with regard to the coordination of the cluster network. Again, the AUEU region is a region of 1.5 billion people. So uh, a central approach might not be advisable, but instead a polycentric approach. And let's have a quick look about the uh, geographical uh, levels that we are addressing here to be very clear. So the local level, uh, you find there uh, different actors that we have in mind to be addressed uh, with such a platform. This platform should serve these actors, which are NGOs, funders, farmers, farmers organization, institutions for capacity building, research and innovation institutions, decision makers, agribusiness, uh, professional organization and companies, and end users in food markets. The next geographical level in this cluster network approach is the national level. Again, 82 member states, 82 or more ministries, um, which are related to uh, the food systems and ongoing programs and projects and the private sector. Then we have the multi-country level. And there, um, the uh, West Africa EU Alliance, which we established already with Leap for FNSSA and the North Africa EU Alliance are playing a role. The African regions, the regional economic communities, but also institutions like CORAF, Azareca, Cicadesa, NASFRO, WASCALS, ASCALSILS, uh, they are playing a role there. And on top organizations like uh, FARA, NEPAD, RUFORUM, and so on and so forth. So, um, for the continental level and the bicontinental level, um, there we are addressing the HLPD, which stands for High Level Policy Dialogue, where each 82 member states um, in the region are meeting on a regular basis, but also the inter-academy panel of the network of um, African science academies, Jackie is representing this institution here, and the European uh, national science academies. Uh, so this is the inter-academy panel. We are also addressing here and continental programs and projects and uh, so on and so forth. So um, we also do not have to uh, forget the Global Forum for Agricultural Research. And the suggestion is because of this big diversity of actors, to uh, organize this in continental cluster hubs, which uh, should be in a, in a close communication in a, in a close uh, exchange of um, information. Um, and that is quite an um, ambitious approach. And that is what we are um, uh, having in mind with building the platform and uh, with ensuring a closer uh, cooperation, closer dialogues, um, and uh, and that. So um, as, a, as a last point uh, to describe the model um, that we developed so far, we also identified four main fields of coordination and they have already been mentioned. There is the cluster network, different clusters on different geographical levels. We have in principle um, one cluster network in the AU EU region, and you can see this as subclusters, different funders consortia. We are envisaging a funders consortia for the next step um, of uh, for building the platform. We also considering the field of knowledge management and the interfaces that are needed there as a very important field for coordination and communication 
as such, um, which implies different methods, technologies, and channels that are relevant for such a platform. And we subsume this um, in, the, uh, in the term knowledge management and communication framework in which all these actors um, should be included, should be addressed, and, and which should serve them um, in the collaboration. So that was the model. The question now is um, what, what practice? So we have the meta governance model, we have the platform process, which uh, you uh, could consider as a succession of program Recording cycles. And um, in, uh, in the time, this would describe a, a spiral. So uh, it is a succession of program cycles that we consider. But what does that mean in practice? Um, a platform that we want um, has to build on um, the people who uh, need their services or who wants to contribute. And um, we took this as the opportunity to establish the West Africa EU Alliance, short WAIA, and the North Africa EU Alliance as pilots. It is not that we separate this from um, the other regions from Africa. It was just, we have a project, we have uh, five years, and um, this is not so much time to address the whole region. So as a pilot, we established the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance, and we um, uh, initiated there seven working groups, three working groups, in the Waia region and four in the Naya region. And these working groups, working group number one works on a theory of change and impact pathway for the region. So we have one TCIP for theory of change and impact pathway for the Waia region and one for the Naya region. We are working on a communication concept and we hear later some uh, presentations uh, with that regard. Um, we have uh, also TCIPs, two TCIPs on data and knowledge management at the end, and we are working on um, a private sector cluster so far only in the North Africa EU Alliance, and perhaps some of you here who are uh, here today might want to establish also a working group on the private sector uh, in the West Africa uh, EU Alliance. To give you just a brief um, impression um, where we are and that you are aware that uh, the other regions in Africa are invited, for example, to uh, establish um, other alliances like in East Africa, a EU alliance or Southern Africa, a EU alliance or Central Africa, a EU alliance. These are considered as sub alliances uh, for the final overall AU EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So be inspired. Perhaps you want to initiate already this process sooner or later. We hope to do this indeed uh, all together. We are here now um, in this uh, timeline. It's color coded. The blue is the Waia site. The green is uh, the Naia site. And um, we are intending to finalize in June in a few months uh, the theories of change and impact pathway, the communication concepts, so that end of August, this could feed into a process where we want to establish a consortium to maintain this process uh, of the development of an AUEU platform. So what are we doing in detail? And this is just quickly here uh, to show this to you in the Waia and in the Naya region. We develop, as I mentioned, two theories of change and impact pathway and monitoring and evaluation and learning concepts. And you are warmly welcome to join this process in the three working groups in the WIA and in the three, uh, in, in, in the first working group in the NIA and in the first working group in the NIA. We are also working on a communication concept uh, and uh, the colleague from CORAF later will present what is this communication uh, concept exactly about and how we could it feed into the future platform. We are uh, suggesting in parallel and working on this polycentric uh, cluster coordination approach, which uh, includes Okay, my technology doesn't work here. Uh, this includes also uh, the question of how to develop clusters, uh, how to establish clusters to support there if they do not exist already and how to um, manage a cluster mechanism. 
Um, we have uh, already drafted a coordination hub that will serve this program cycle approach. And this includes 15 services for each of the four phases uh, that are considered to be relevant. And we are about uh, to establish a funders consortium. Um, what is the goal here? And um, at the end, at the end of Leap for FNSSA, which will come this year in November, the idea is to establish an AU EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. And we are doing this by forming a consortium which will uh, continue this process. So from the meta governance model and the platform process, um, that we have in mind. Uh, this is in progress. Please understand this. We are discussing this with uh, funders. We are discussing this with other experts. Is that the right model? Is that uh, a viable way? And we are developing finally an AU EU uh, theory of change and impact pathway in which the ones from the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance will feed into. And the same for the communication concept and the question how to coordinate the clusters, how to coordinate uh, the platform. So um, this is the vision, the meta governance model, the platform's process. And uh, the next step is the co-design of the coordination infrastructure for this platform, establishing the funders consortium. The fifth of uh, the good morning forums is a closed funders meeting where funders will discuss about the way ahead. And it is about initiating a succession of program cycles within an AU EU network of actors which needs coordination. These are the next milestones. I thank you very much uh, for your attention. Um, from model to practice, this is only possible together. Therefore, uh, we are very happy that we came together here, that we can talk and that you will uh, also follow the coming Good Morning sessions and the process of Leap for FNSSA so that we are designing the platform that we want. May I ask uh, my colleagues in Bari, Italy to uh, please share the next Mentimeter. Thank you very much. So after um, this um, speech, um, we would like to ask you what influences your participation in the theory of change and impact pathway approach. So please have a look in the chat. Um, you will find there uh, the Mentimeter uh, link. Please click on it and you can give your feedback um, in just um, a few words, you can type them uh, in the field in the Mentimeter and share it here. What influences your participation in the theory of change and impact pathway approach? That is the beginning of a program cycle, the prioritization process, which should be as inclusive as possible. What influences your participation there? I do not see any results. Perhaps it comes in a bit later here. We are 131 participants. That's a lot, I'm happy. And we read here, an East African region in Africa, trying to understand the approach. Yes, we will have later a presentation on that, which might bring a bit more light into the question of what is a situation analysis in a TCIP? What are the roadmaps about? Indeed, this instrument has to be understand and in particular that it is a participatory approach to learn and contribute, be part of the working groups, uh, for example, exactly. Thanks for your feedback. Expertise collaboration system is needed. A better understanding of the sustainability plan is needed. Indeed, the monitoring, evaluation and learning is key there. What means learning and how to maintain a succession of program cycles? Help the policymakers to understand the future challenges. Yes, for that we need expertise indeed. And this should be included not only in the theory of change and impact pathway, 
but in the whole process of a program cycle where the dialogues between science and end users are relevant. I need to learn how to write theory of change better to get results. Uh, yes, and indeed, this is also a common process. This instrument has been used in the Leap Agri projects for the 27 funded uh, Okay, my microphone has been muted. Now, am I audible? You're back, you're back. Okay, or did you switch off the microphone because I talked too much? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks. Colleagues, great, 29 um, feedbacks. I only see here uh, this upper eight ones. I cannot see uh, the others in Mentimeter, but uh, don't worry. In the background, we have these uh, feedbacks um, in our database. We will later go through all your comments and um, make use of them uh, for the development of the future platform and the next step, the consortium that we want to uh, build. 35 feedbacks, that's great. Let me again give you the Mentimeter link in the chat. Take your time and just type a few responses in. I think we cannot see, um, it's not possible here for the Mentimeter to show all the contributions. Um, this doesn't matter for now, but we will have, oh, it moves, wonderful. So the sustainability issue has been raised. Answers to foot insecurity. Yes, exactly. This is something to be described in a situation analysis. What is the problem and what is the solution, the potential? There's somebody happy to be in a TCIP. You're warmly welcome. Uh, we have two working groups and uh, you can join them. Just contact us and then uh, we will direct you to the chairs of these working groups. Uh, and then you can participate. Um, I have learned to see the TCIP development in different levels. Excellent, please contribute with your knowledge uh, to share, learn how to sustain development efforts. Yes, TCIP helps to understand how change came about. It helps you to understand impact pathway. Exactly, there is somebody familiar with them. Um, mindset path dependency. The mutual benefit of being part of the knowledge free marketplace that platform provides. Better and deeper understanding of impacts of funded research to better make use of the results. That's exactly the point. At the end of a program cycle, the funders will see way better how they can uh, focus investments um, in a meaningful way. That's also a part of the learning process. It is important for two and valuable collaborations between researchers and policymakers. And this is exactly what the theory of change and impact pathway instrument is about. Therefore, please join the working groups because we need your input. It starts with the situation analysis and there your contributions are relevant and then in the roadmaps to be written and uh, we only can learn from each other all. Therefore, please join this process. I need to learn how to write and expect results from the TCIP approach. Exactly, because once such a theory of change and impact pathway has been written as a document and funders would have agreed to invest in it and other contributors uh, as well, the question is how to develop uh, a set of indicators for the monitoring and evaluation process and to describe the learning process. And that's the right way um, to do that. So 50 responses, that's great. We are currently 127 participants. I would say um, we can move on uh, to the next question. Let's say the last 15 seconds for you and then let's move to the next. Okay. Uh, Stefan, I also just want to request uh, participants who are keying in their responses on the chat 
facility not to do so, but rather use the Mentimeter, which I think uh, Siam has uh, graciously provided the link. So please don't use the chat for this to answer the Mentimeter question, use the Mentimeter facility to be able to do so, because then we're able to get it on a database and uh, uh, collect them later on so that we are able to make an analysis of what your responses are. Uh, the other thing is I need to apologize for our French speaking colleagues also. Unfortunately, the forums are held only in English. Uh, we also appreciate your responses in the Metimeter. I think I've seen a few uh, responses in French as well. We'll also get back to you uh, specifically if there are questions or, or comments that need getting back to. But please bear with us, our language of interaction during the good morning stakeholder forum is English. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, uh, Jackie. Indeed, language should not be a barrier, uh, but we could not uh, organize this meeting here also with a translation. Um, but we will work on this uh, in the future uh, so that we might have at least French uh, as a translation um, available. So, but please um, take your time and don't hesitate. Uh, you indeed can, as uh, Jackie said, uh, also give your comments in, in French here. Um, so I would say, let's go to uh, the next uh, question, please. I think Stefan. Yes, exactly. Jackie. <laughs> yeah. So um, what, the, the next question is what, what influences your participation in a monitoring and evaluation and learning approach, M-E-L. So this is an abbreviation that you will hear many times. Also here, please give your comments via the Mentimeter. You find the Mentimeter contact um, in the chat, please click on it and then you can give your feedback. The monitoring, evaluation and learning approach. As presented already, uh, we consider uh, a network approach for the future platform. And the question is, how can we ensure a continuous monitoring after um, uh, projects for research and innovation uh, came to an end towards a proper outcome and impact analysis? So. The question here, what influences your participation in the monitoring, evaluation and learning approach um, to which we have to design uh, for this platform and how can we ensure um, uh, participation in that? So this has to be defined uh, later. Um, the lack of communication um, influences your participation. Yes, so indeed communication is a key. That's why we are working on a knowledge management and communication framework. Mm, we have to learn more the methodologies. Yes, in particular, it starts with the indicator development, which is an important point. Um, by scientist expert in the field and uh, being uh, in the field, and looking for implementing knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thanks. To learn how to measure indicators for success of projects. Thank you. Track research progress based on the theory of change for impact. Mm -hmm. Mainly to learn another approach from another perspective and actively exchange new ideas. So you're warmly welcome. Um, improve collaboration with our partners in the fields. Yes, because monitoring and evaluation allows us to improve our work, and in particular, the work between scientists and end users of knowledge. You need to understand the concept. Yes, for that, please join one of the uh, groups uh, for the theory of change and impact pathway in the West Africa EU Alliance or in the North Africa EU Alliance uh, to work on that. M&E has always been central to any project or program, but the learning element consolidates the communication, revision and corrections along the M&E process. 
Exactly. Thank you. The skills of tracking the indicators and the friendless of the tools. Understanding uh, how to achieve maximum impact. For that, indeed, this approach has been chosen. The need to involve uh, this exchange of ideas and learn from shortcomings, the opportunity to learn beside simple monitoring and evaluation. Exactly. We are 20, 127 uh, participants here. We have 27 uh, feedback so far. So please contribute. This is the way how we can build together this platform. Um, if your contribution is not here, it will not be in the platform. <laughs> and this is something that we will uh, repeat many times, uh, that we repeated already many times in this process. So please understand this as an opportunity that we come together, that we work together here towards a future platform. And here's the question, what influences your participation in the monitoring, evaluation and learning approach? And this also could, you also could consider yourself for an answer here as a recipient of, uh, of the results of such an uh, approach. Mm -hmm. I read the French one, pour connaître des outils qui nous permettent d'adapter notre agriculture et de l'orienter vers plus d'efficacité. Based on the current system that we are putting in place in relation to the question, is, the, is my role of leading the knowledge, man knowledge engagement management platform so all research findings data are centralized and access to all. And this is indeed also a an, an key issue that we are addressing in the project. We are uh, working also on elements for the knowledge management and communication framework, which is a project database that you can find on our website. Um, and we are also working on a tool to analyze research uh, output called KEOPS. And in uh, Good Morning 3, uh, we will even have a presentation uh, about this question. So the communication aspect, in fact, that is closely linked to the monitoring, evaluation and learning approach. So please go ahead, 40 feedbacks, that's excellent. Um, we are 128 um, colleagues here around in this good morning. Um, what else is written here? The measure, adjust and correct in the right moment. Um, exactly, a monitoring evaluation and learning approach uh, allows also indeed to adjust processes and if they are going into the wrong direction you can correct them so it's the benefit of a monitoring and evaluation and learning approach is manifold and again uh, we are underlining we are always um, considering monitoring evaluation and learning as one therefore we choose the abbreviation mel 42 feedbacks um I would say the last uh, 30 seconds, and then uh, we can move on. What influences your participation in the approach on monitoring, evaluation, and learning? I need to understand indicators for evaluation and monitoring. Um, allow me to answer, uh, you need to create these indicators. And this is indeed the approach here with writing a theory of change and impact pathway. And this moment where a new program has to be uh, initiated, which means that some funders are involved and um, other expertise. In this moment, one has to agree in the monitoring, evaluation and learning uh, process uh, on the indicators for outputs, outcomes, and impact, um, and, and how to monitor. And uh, this is something that has to be co-designed. So these indicators indeed uh, requires a certain discussion and a consensus, um, and the question uh, who then has to monitor this uh, beyond a project's end, but 
within the cycle of a program. So I would say uh, we have uh, 45 uh, feedbacks. Uh, that's very good. You're doing very well. We are 130 participants right now. Um, I would say let's uh, move ahead. Um, please, uh, I want to share the screen now again. And let me enlarge the screen here because I, the next presenter, and uh, with that, I hand over uh, to Jackie. Uh, please, Jackie, go ahead with uh, the next presentation. Hello, am I audible? Hi, uh, Stefan, I, I think I have unstable internet, but it is, uh, just confirm that you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Stefan. Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, thank you. Okay, because my internet warns me that it is unstable. Uh -huh. But anyway, I, thank you very much, Stefan, for your contribution. Uh, thank you very much, our, our audience and our participants for participating in the Menti Mentimeter questions as well. So that gives us feedback on your thoughts on both uh, the TCIP as well as the monitoring and evaluation and learning process. We now move on to the session of our program, which has both presentations and discussions and will enable us to develop our agenda better and forward. So I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Khalid Sangare from SEALS, uh, talking on the where, and I think uh, Stefan elaborated that where is West African EU-AU alliance. Uh, to be able to talk on the draft and its potential for our common AU-EU program. Uh, Mr. Khalid is part of, and actually the chair of the general theory of change and impact pathways uh, from SEALS, which is uh, part of the West African AU-EU alliance. Uh, Mr. Khalid, you have the floor. Do we have Mr. Khalid with us? Check if your microphone is muted, if you're with us. Mm -hmm. In our participants list, Siam, maybe you could confirm whether Dr. Khalid is with us? For what we know, uh, Dr. Khalid is not in the list now. Not in, okay. okay. So maybe Stefan, maybe just a few words. Mm -hmm. on what we've been doing with the uh, where um, mm -hmm. in respect to a uh, general uh, theory of change and impact pathways. Maybe just a few words, then we'll engage our participants on another uh, round of Metimeter feedback questions. So then uh, allow me just to go a bit back uh, indeed to one of the slides, which I already presented. Um, so, I might go uh, a bit into the details here. Um, I mentioned uh, already in my presentation that it was quite a long process uh, to establish the West Africa EU Alliance. And we are very happy that we have organizations like uh, CORAF on board, uh, but also uh, WASCAL, ECOWAS, and SILS. And SILS uh, was so friendly and, and Khalil Sangare uh, um, as in person to chair the working group on uh, writing a general theory of change and impact pathways for the West Africa EU Alliance. And we uh, conducted several meetings um, and this is a learning curve during the pandemic uh, how to collaborate on a document with person with person who never uh, met physically. Um, and so we established for that uh, a digital platform in which we could meet and where we uh, uploaded a template for a theory of change and impact pathway so that the working group members uh, could contribute. And um, Khalil uh, was so kind uh, to start with the writing of a situation analysis for the West Africa EU Alliance. Um, again, as a starting point uh, to give a rough idea uh, what is 
possible um, to be written in such a situation analysis to inspire and to motivate also the other colleagues to contribute there. Uh, so this is still uh, a document in progress. Um, and uh, he was starting with a situation analysis, which uh, he in this case did not start it with a SWOT analysis, but with uh, listing the problems and the assumed causes of the problems um, in the Bahia region. And um, Stefan, Stefan, so, to sorry. This, yes? Sorry, Stefan. Uh, Mr. Dia uh, Mr. Khalid is joining in a couple of minutes. We make a mistake with the time, so he's joining. Okay, okay, good. Thank you very much. So, however, I will then, um, for him, explain a bit again the theory of change and impact pathway. Let me know, please, when he's there, and then um, Khalil can immediately take over. Thank you so much, uh, Gaetano. So, um, in 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 SILS, they um, um, drafted this. Uh, a list of problems and their causes and started also the context and stakeholder analysis. And the idea is that all you are, who are here, you potentially can contribute in this working group. You just have to contact uh, Khalil and then um, he will explain uh, everything to you um, with some problems that might have been overlooked uh, by him. So this is not a SILS document. He was just kindly, uh, so kind to, to initiate this uh, document. Um, and then uh, in the next weeks, uh, we will start designing uh, the roadmaps. And again, the more you are all participating, um, the more need oriented and appropriate will this theory of change and impact pathway be to initiate a, a program on research and innovation and capacity building. Gaetano, mm -hmm. I heard you. Is Khalil yeah, here? Yeah. So Mr. Sangar is here. Okay, great. Hello Khalil, good morning. I'm sorry that there was a confusion with regard to the time. You can share your screen please. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. So please share your screen yeah, with Khalil, uh, and then you can start the presentation. I was just uh, explaining the theory of change and impact pathway a bit more in detail, so you don't have to refer to it anymore. You can then start um, with a bit the content of the situation analysis, please. Please share your screen and your slides. I cannot hear you, uh, Khalil. I'm not sure whether it's an issue with the microphone or the connection in general. Okay, it seems that we have the technical problem. Um, I suggest uh, that we move ahead then, um, that we come to the next presenter. Jackie, if you agree. Yeah, sure. And uh, then, mm -hmm. yeah, and there. Oh, you're back. You're sharing your screen. Okay. Yes. So, Khalil, you let us know when you're able to make the presentation because we also had uh, actually three Mentimeter questions to go with your presentation. Result or see how we go about. Uh, about uh, the Mentimeter questions uh, five, six, and seven. So moving on then as part of our discussion, uh, we also want a presentation from uh, Mr. David Akana from CORAF. He, he is the chair for the communication co concept for uh, cluster mechanism. And we wanted him to discuss with us uh, the focused investment uh, for dialogues in West Africa EU AU Alliance. So, David, you have the floor. And I think you're able to share your screen as well, and present your slides, and unmute yourself. Thank you. I stop sharing the screen. Uh, if David just show up, please. Your microphone. Uh, I I cannot hear you. If you're no, there, my please. microphone is my microphone okay. is on already. I'm just waiting for you to stop sharing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. That. Good morning. Thank you, David. And you have ten minutes. 
Excellent, great. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie, and thank you so much, Chair Stephen. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, so we are deeply uh, uh, glad to be here uh, for this uh, stakeholders, uh, good morning stakeholders meeting, uh, the first uh, iteration. Um, so this was a three-part process, as you've heard Stefan and uh, Jackie and the team uh, explain. Um, part one being the theory of change, part two, communications, and part three, knowledge management, but all interwoven. So I'm going to be speaking a little bit about, you know, what we have been uh, putting together since we started uh, work in this area. So I have a three-part presentation as well. So one is going to be on the uh, stakeholders category metrics. Uh, and I'm insisting on metrics here because um, it's, 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 it's actually what it is, right? So then part two is going to be the sort of the existing communication uh, concepts within uh, the uh, broad set of stakeholders in the wire uh, ecosystem, both in uh, Europe and in West Africa. And the last is going to be the typology of uh, stakeholders dialogue. Uh, dialogue uh, in part because I think you Excuse might have asked different. Excuse me, David, I cannot see your slides moving. Are you moving your slides? Uh, yes, I am actually on my second slide. Okay, I cannot see your slides moving. Um, so let's see, can you see my this one? Put them in uh, presentation mode. Uh, I can. Hmm. Actually, it's on the presentation mode. It is in the presentation mode, okay. Yes, then so I. I suggest, uh, David, um, I, I will show your slides and then um, I will move them if you don't mind. Shall we do that? Well, the only thing is I've made some modifications to what I sent to you. So let me just try to uh, please stop sharing and try again another, uh, just, just stop sharing and try again, let's see. You can stop sharing and then reshare. That I yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do now. No, uh, it is only that it is not in full screen. If it was in full screen, it would move. I'm just a little bit surprised about that, though. Can you see now? Yes, I see slide three now. So I was actually on the presentation plan. Can you see that? Uh, this is the work mode. It's not the presentation mode that I see. Um, so ensure uh, tips, swap display, use uh, slideshow. Yeah, button, right. Okay, yep. yeah. Now it's the uh, slide number two presentation. Can you see that? So can I go ahead? Yes. Excellent. Great. So apologies about that. Um, okay. So I was saying that, um, I, you know, in terms of the plan of my presentation, it's in three parts. Uh, the stakeholder categories where we identify uh, different stakeholders in the wire ecosystem, Europe and West Africa, uh, the existing communication concepts or strategies uh, in the various institutions, as well as uh, then last part is going to be on the sort of uh, uh, typology of stakeholders dialogue. And uh, the word dialogue is used intentionally in part because this is a two way sort of iterative communication, not necessarily one way. So that's, I think, uh, the uh, why, why I think it's important for us to, to emphasize this word. So with that said, uh, I'll move on to uh, the first part of my presentation, which is a stakeholders category. So overall speaking, I think it's important for us to look at this in terms of what the metrics that was conceived initially by the team, Stefan and their team, and that is primarily what we've been working on. So the stakeholder category allows us to be able to have uh, identify the stakeholders, have an abbreviation, explain exactly what it is, because some of this may not be very apparent to everyone. So it's easy to say stakeholder startup, for instance, in, in a rural area, and you might, I mean, it depends on, you know, whether you're in West Africa and Europe, what does a startup mean, for instance, in a rural area? So we thought that we should have specific definition for each. And then the last part of this job was for us to be able to go ahead and sort of uh, identify the assumed uh, specific needs as well as communication uh, and cooperation needs. So how do all these partners work together? So we are identifying stakeholders at the local, national, multi-country, uh, meaning that across regions, of course, and, of, and then lastly, at the continental level, uh, being, you know, bi-continental projects, institutions, networks, and, and, and that sort of thing. So that's pretty much the metrics that we've been using and that's what we've been completing and going forward since we started this work. 
Having said that, starting at the local level, great picture that taken in Kaolak, that's an area about uh, 40, uh, sorry, about two, uh, 200 kilometers out of uh, the Senegalese capital in Dakar. This is, this is a startup, a local startup in, 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 uh, in that area, women who are selling seats. So uh, I, I just wanted to sort of give you a visual picture for some of you who may not exactly understand uh, how these startups might look like in rural areas. So these are some of the uh, stakeholders uh, that we have identified so far. I'm just going to go over them very quickly because we do not have a lot of time. Uh, but I suspect that some of you are already familiar with the document, the working document. So you can see some of these definitions in there. And we are talking here about startups, smallest enterprises, rural-based enterprises, urban-based enterprises, cooperatives, et cetera, et cetera. You know, farmers, pastoralists, headers, these are uh, important stakeholders in the food system uh, and in the overall uh, chain, in, 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 uh, particularly in West Africa. Uh, but I also say this is both for the European and the, uh, the West African uh, regions. Uh, I think it's important to, to emphasize that. Having said that, uh, I'll move on to my next slide. Uh, hang on a second, it's not moving. Why is it not moving? Uh, now I should be moving forward, not backward. Uh, sorry about that again. Uh, let's see. Should be moving forward. Technology is not on my side as well. It's different. So <laughs> yeah, if I yeah. can get that right. Yeah, perhaps you can scroll instead of using the keyboard. Uh, it was also for me the case yesterday. But don't worry, it's it's fine. Okay, we I need, can need some yeah. time. Yeah, I think I did that. So. Um, so those were, um, you know, what what I just showed you were, you know, some of the stakeholders at, you know, these different levels, um, uh, but mostly, you know, uh, enterprises. Then with respect to research and innovation institutions, obviously there are many of them. So there are a lot of research programs between both ecosystems as Europe and West Africa research projects, you know, innovation hubs, uh, incubators, you know, um, local labs, extension services. Uh, and I'm just going to stop at that. Again, the overall intention is to give you probably the overall uh, broader picture and not necessarily get into all the details because there are specific meetings where we are having engagements with respect to, you know, defining this, identifying the specific needs and how we can cooperate together, right? So I'd move on to, to, to my next slide. Um, these are capacity building institutions, uh, private research institutions, public uh, research institutions, training centers, as well as uh, schools uh, and universities. Um, at a national level, um, this um, photograph is taken from um, one of the largest state businesses uh, in Ghana. Uh, and they are very critical players in uh, the scaling up of uh, seed related uh, technologies and innovations in West Africa. Uh, so these are players that you cannot do without. Um, but you know, um, talking about national level decision makers uh, or even decision makers at the local level, we are talking about in rural communities, you know, quarterheads, uh, chiefs, funds, kings. Uh, that's for the West African concept. And it'd be good to look at how what this applies in the European context. Is it the, the rural mayor, or you know, um, I don't know what are the geographical. Um, you know, uh, uh, arrangements uh, within within the European context, but all of this has to fit into this system. So you look at that in the cities, in the districts, national governments, ministries, multilateral, uh, international networks, transnational networks, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Um, vulnerable people, it's important for us to emphasize this because I think you might have heard Stefan say in part of his introductory statement that this has to be inclusive. And being inclusive means that we are not leaving anyone out. And the disabled, the households headed by women, household where the you know the head of the family, um, you know they are they are mostly the ones leading families. Vulnerable people likely to suffer from gender-based violence. Uh, people belonging to certain cultural minorities, you know, widows without income, you know, climate refugees who represent this picture right here. They have to be factored into the overall equation. Otherwise, this is not going to be inclusive, equitable, you know, uh, and just. So that, that's important for us to mention that. Multi-country level, I just showed the West African picture, the West African map here, it's a little bit uh, not, not blurry. 
uh, but obviously it takes the fans uh, 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 photograph of both continents. Uh, that's more applicable because this is again a bicontinental initiative. But again, this just applies to the West African region. Um, the forums and network, and I'm going to go a little bit fast, and apologies if I'm going faster. That's only because I understand we have 10 minutes to do this. Uh, obviously, open up to more discussion and inputs because this is not a complete, this is not completed work. Uh, but just, you know, draw my attention if you think I'm going fast. So, um, regional economic communities, central players in West Africa, the economic community for West African states, as well as the West African Economic and Monetary Union, with several departments, one on the environment, others on gender uh, development, uh, one on water resources, agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and keep in mind that this issue spans across different directorates in uh, this regional economic community. So you have to bring those in. And it is applicable for ECOWAS, but applicable for the African Union as well, because this uh, international, uh, regional, uh, international bodies uh, have pretty much the same governance structure. And then on the research side, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, FARA, CORAF, of course, WASCAL, that uh, I think uh, the leading uh, work on Group 3. But as a concept here that I'm just throwing in, which may be new to some of you, it's this whole concept of centers of specialization. It is something set up along the CGX sort of arrangement, but where each country is taking up research in a specific commodity, like here in Nigeria, where you can see my mouth, they lead research on aquaculture in West Africa. So all their innovations are disseminated across West Africa. What that does is it leads to economies of scale and then reduces duplication of efforts. If you look at where my mouth is on now, it's on dry cereal research with a center based in Senegal. Every innovation they do, they have the obligation to share it across the region. So that's just a new concept that I wanted to put in here. So they are going to be key players in this as well. And then, um, you know, the ROPA, which I think, um, you know, it's, they are the end users of our research. This is a farmer's network in the region. I think they are pretty critical. We talked a little bit about uh, SEALs, leading work on the theory of change. Um, and then uh, others like the uh, West Africa Fertilizer Association and other interprofessional bodies, some on livestock, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then the financial institutions in the region so you have the African Development Bank, that's in French Bank, African Development Bank, which is a West African Development Bank, and several other uh, commercial banks that are also critical. Uh, I'll end this slide on the um, stakeholders category with, you know, insurance systems and mechanisms, um, you know, the central uh, laboratory for food safety and control, the AFTA secretary, which is a new initiative to let free flowing of uh, trade in Africa, which is a new initiative that I suspect many of you are aware of and could fundamentally transform how, you know, the countries in the region trade. If you look at the level of trade in the region, it's mostly outbound, so to Europe and other parts of the world. But within the region, there isn't a lot of trade. So that could significantly also influence, uh, you know, trade in food, uh, food, food related commodities. Um, and then uh, by continental, you know about this AU, EU high level policy dialogue that's already happening. They've been holding a lot of meetings. This is one of their meetings in 2019. Uh, so, needless uh, speaking to them, I think that's all central to what we are doing here. And then, as I said, the African Union, European Union, and their commissions, AU high level policy dialogue, and all the other things, uh, the other initiatives that are ongoing. Again, I'll spare you with all of the details right here because I think it's important for us to be able to move on to uh, the next uh, second part of my presentation, which is the existing communication mechanisms or strategies. And I'd say there are many of them. So what are they? I would say that WASCAL, and this is obviously an opportunity for us to invite our colleagues in WASCAL to input uh, into the document and telling us what is the existing communications strategy or mechanisms there. I just picked this out because it's a WASCAL bulletin. I think it's uh, twice, six times a year. So this is the November and December edition. I think it summarizes uh, things that are happening in the WASCAL uh, ecosystem. So we want you to be able to provide what you are doing right now, because knowing what you do right now will be able to allow us to be able to structure how we move this forward. Uh, on the core side, which I have a little bit more mastery of, uh, I would obviously uh, provide you a little bit of that. So there is an existing uh, communication strategy, which is on the refresh. It's 2018, 2022, but we are refreshing that to align with other strategic refresh that is going on in the organization at the moment, taking into consideration emerging issues like 
the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, mechanization, and several other issues. So um, I'm not going to emphasize a lot on this. There's a strong online uh, infrastructure, communication infrastructure in Cora. We have a website, uh, strong social media component with over 41 million that sort of engagement during the last year. Hi, it's important for you know, TNIs, technologies and innovation society, you could also use that as a platform to be able to engage people at all levels. Some of the ones that we've mentioned include particularly youth and women. Newsletter year monthly goes out compilation of sort of the activities that we do here. And then uh, a, a rural a, a radio station, more or less, uh, called Agripreneur TV to engage young people. Primarily, this is a tool where we use to engage young people across uh, Africa on, 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 uh, uh, on, on innovations. And then there is FARA with obviously a communication strategy, KM1 as well. And I know that they also leverage a set of print tools and several other communication collaterals and meetings. Um, uh, Sears, Yumua. Uh, the one thing I want to emphasize about Sears and Yumua and other regional institutions is that the governance of communication here is there is an institutional wide communication strategy, but within that, there are several other strategies for related projects and initiatives. So that's pretty much how communication is set up. Same thing with ECOWAS and at the level of uh, the African Union. So you might notice in terms of the trends of communication mechanisms in these institutions. First, as I said, organization wide. Then there are specific communications for programs, projects, interventions. And it's mostly corporate communications, to put it that way. It's not a sort of the C4D, which is the sort of communication that goes into as addressing behavioral issues for adoption of technologies that would happen with extension services and in the field. No, it's not really that. And then uh, I don't have a lot of, or we don't have a lot of information on, uh, you know, communications at the level of, um, you know, other institutions like the farmer organization, um, but I'd have to say that in addition to what I just showed you for CORAP, there is a scaling up strategy of CORAP, which is essentially a document that allows for, uh, shows the pattern in which we engage with, um, you know, upscale of technologies in the field, including the innovation platforms, which is primarily a, uh, an area where you have different stakeholders in the research and innovation uh, uh, ecosystem coming together to be able to discuss how to better uptake technologies. Having said that, I'm going into the last part of my presentation, which is now the typology of stakeholders dialogue. And at some point, Stefan is going to tell you that we had a lot of back and forth with respect to that. This probably looks like a very uh, theoretical approach to, to, to this, but I think it was meant to be this way. Uh, and again, here is sort of the metrics in terms of how we are doing this job. So we are looking at the stakeholders dialogue. Look at the first one, the first one there, which is uh, farmers and scientists. And we're looking at sort of the channels that, you know, would be suitable for interactions between farmers and scientists. The sort of communication technologies are involved, the methods. And in the rural areas, it happens differently from urban areas, because I think this is critical. We all know that if you're in Dakar or in Abuja or in Nairobi, you do not communicate in the same way like you were in Kisumu, which is somewhere in northern, uh, north, um, I think that's Northwest uh, Kenya, or maybe if you're in Kaula, which is in the central of Senegal, that's pro probably not the same thing. And I suspect it's the same in Germany, right? Um, where uh, I mean, key partner to, to this overall initiative, but most importantly, also identifying the gaps to be addressed in the TCP. So I'll just show, this is the framework. That's how we're building this as well. And um, I just show you one typology of stakeholders dialogue. This is national governments and scientists. And the channels, sorry, sorry, I just went a little bit ahead. So the channels here, for instance, will be radio, TV, online workshops, printed materials, advocacy, new ICT, and meetings to be able to have this sort of engagement happen. But a big gap here, of course, is that there are a lot of technologies in existence, and everyone knows that. The real issue sometimes is that the enabling environment is not there for these technologies to be scaled up. And so the way in which you address this um, is that in the interaction between scientists and national governments, the discussion, which is partly advocacy, is also that the government should put in place policies that would allow for the uptake of technologies. But here as well, we are saying we have to address the needs of youth and women. 
because one of the things that we also notice is women and youth are not often involved, but they constitute probably the majority of the uh, uh, stakeholders. And so what will be uh, in this uh, sort of engagement is making sure that the national governments are making, are uh, taking, putting in place the right environment and the right infrastructure incentive for youth and gender sensitive technologies to be taken up. And we can do this for every other stakeholders category, be it that of decision makers and entrepreneurs, be it that of uh, farmers and scientists, or any other sort of dialogue that we might have to look at. And we have started that work, but it is not complete. And one of the reasons uh, uh, for having this discussion, and I think that goes to my last slide, is what is the expectation of the communications team to everyone participating in this more, uh, Good Morning uh, Stakeholders Forum? It is that we need your inputs to complete the stakeholders category metrics. A lot of progress has been made, but this was intent, intended to be a co-creation exercise. So we need your inputs as well. And I suspect maybe that uh, the questions that are going to be asked after my presentation would fit into this. Hopefully it does. Number two is all existing approaches, plans, mechanisms, and all of that. We would need you to be able to help us identify those as well. And lastly, the completed typology of stakeholders dialogue, and most importantly, the gaps to engage youths and women meaningfully, because this has to be inclusive, it has to be equitable, and it has to be just, which means we cannot, we have, we cannot leave out the, uh, we cannot only go along with the conventional players, the new players have to come into consideration and these are youths and women and the vulnerable people. So with that, uh, I have ended my presentation. I apologize if I went pretty fast, but I think we have room to be able to dialogue and improve this. So with that, I'm going to hand over to you, Stefan and uh, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, uh, for insightful presentation. And thank you also for elaborating that communication indeed has to be cyclic. It cannot be one-sided neither can it be top down or bottom up. So thank you very much for that presentation. And I think we want to initiate the Mentimeter around your presentation, uh, which looks at uh, how the communication concept uh, will provide a solid basis for developing the PMC, in this case, uh, the platform uh, for prioritization, investment, polarization and application, as well as the Mel, uh, yes. So yeah, that's we are looking at question number eight. Yes. So we have we need to get your say. Again, uh, please you just can start. You can start. Yes, but we need. Uh, I think just highlight the um, link again, just in case somebody else joined and didn't have it before. Thank you. I can see Stefan has. So let's see what you think um, based on what David has presented. Do you think does the communication concept provide us a solid basis for developing the requirements for the platform? Whether we're looking at prioritization, investment, valorization, application, uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning. So far, we only have seven people out of 125. I hope you've not gone for lunch. It's still good morning, I hope. Thank you. I can see more participating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At least we can see uh, from your inputs that there's a tie between uh, the relevance of the communication concept as it applies to prioritization and monitoring, evaluation, and learning. We only have uh, 26, 27 people. Uh, it would be nice always to get at least 50% of you participating. So if you haven't, please have your say so that we are able to guarantee that our communication concept can actually deliver on what we intended to do in the end in respect to the platform. Awesome, we have 38, 39 responses. 
And still, I think prioritization and Mel take the lead. Mm -hmm. Forty. I just need ten more responses from you. Then we can call it a day. But we still have some time because we had ten minutes uh, for your participation. Let us know what you think via the chat. Uh, and I think in the meantime, uh, we still would like to hear from uh, Khalid, I think. Come on, yes, we're getting there. One more, one more person. Perhaps here, Jackie, if I may, uh, just to remind the, all the colleagues here, indeed, prioritization is the first phase of the program management uh, and innovation cycle. Investment was the second phase, valorization the third phase, and application was the fourth phase in the cyclic programming approach. And in each of these phases, uh, different communication approaches are needed. That's the assumption here. Yeah. And then also that the M and E L is actually a continuous process throughout uh, those stages of the PMC. OK, we've, we've hit 50. Awesome. <laughs> OK. So that gave us a very good view of what you think about the communication concept. Uh, thanks, David, please stay on because there's a session that will still need you to participate in terms of discussion that will be led by, by uh, Henning. Uh, may I just find out, is Khalid there and able to present now? Hello, Jackie. Yes, Khalid, you're there, good. Do you hear me? Yes, so at least I have sound now, which I didn't have before. So welcome okay. back. Are you able to uh, share your screen so that we see your slides as well? Yeah, let's Do you see my screen. Yes, but I'm still waiting for, for it to load. Awesome, I can see it. You're able to go on presentation mode as well. Sorry? Are you able to put it on presentation mode? Yeah, yes, of course. Okay, awesome. Is it okay now? Not yet. Yeah, now it's okay. So Khalid, you have 10 minutes officially, but I'll, because I was, lenient <laughs> with, I was lenient with David, I will extend you grace and give you five minutes more. So just have a run through, uh, through your slides. We'll be talking about the theory of change and impact pathways towards developing common priorities. The floor is yours, Khalid. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jackie. So, uh, good morning, everybody. So, uh, I will just want to speak about what we do, we have done in the this uh, part of the, the project uh, regarding a the, the theory of change and impact pathway to our development of common priorities. So uh, I think uh, Stefan already spoke uh, about uh, this uh, template, this, uh, this, uh, this slide. Uh, the, the, sorry. I did, yes, thank you. Yeah, so what, what I want to, to present here is just the, the situation analysis because uh, we it's we 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 just uh, uh, we just have data from, uh, from situation analysis because it was very difficult for us to uh, to work and to get the feedback of uh, the, the colleagues from other institutions so. Yeah, I just want to present what we we got as a result for the situation analysis, and and uh, after we maybe Stefan will come up with some uh, insight about the roadmaps. So uh, I will speak about the situation analysis uh, by displaying the context 
presenting um, problem and causes and uh, came out with some uh, solution uh, we, ha we had uh, from our colleagues from SEALS, uh, WASCAL, and uh, also CORA. So uh, let me start with the context. So uh, West Africa is one of the most vulnerable region in the world due to its climate, climatic, institutional, and environmental and livelihood and insecurity context. In, indeed, West, uh, agriculture in West Africa account for nearly 40% of the region gross domestic production and is the main source of livelihood for more than 16% uh, of West Africa. Uh, the region is highly exposed uh, to major climatic, agric agricultural, and market risks. Uh, excuse me. Agricultural performance has been highly volatile, triggering more frequent and severe food crises. Um, so uh, people in this West Africa and Sahel are going through perpetual shock, recovery, shock cycle uh, that are becoming the norm in the, in the region and that are seriously threatening the, the sustainable development. So the, at the present, in the Sahel and West Africa, no country can be considered as totally safe from food prices, regardless of the effort made from many years by the government, uh, development partners and research stakeholders. Uh, this raises question about the capacity of the countries from SIS and ECOWAS state members to meet the international commitment to eradicate extreme poverty and famine by two thirty. So what are the the problem? This, uh, I just want to say that this, uh, this problem is uh, what we, we have got from the situation analysis. We used a, a, a table and we got the feedback of, the, uh, of colleagues from the, the, the three institutions. And there are the main causes of uh, uh, in food insecurity uh, we, we, we can meet in our region. So climate change is one of the most uh, seated uh, causes. So climate change and uh, climate variability is uh, known to reduce crop yield and livestock productivity. The second one is uh, the natural resource space. So water, land, and vegetation need for food production is rapidly deteriorating as agriculture and across the landscape. So uh, with the increase of population, uh, agriculture and land is expanding. So we are, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. you hear me? Sorry. So the, the third cause uh, or problem is the increase of uh, conflict. So since um, nearly 10, 10 years, uh, the Sahel, uh, mainly the Sahel is seen as a region with uh, many country, many conflicts. Uh, it's it's, a, it's civil, civil, uh, civil conflict, but it's also conflict between stakeholders, between uh, agriculture and uh, livestock uh, breeders. So the increase of uh, the, the increasing incidence of the conflicts and fragility in West Africa interact with the challenge of food security in multiple, in multiple and complex ways. The region poorly integrated food market cannot cope with large annual fluctuation in food crop production by directing food supplies uh, surplus to area of shortage. And uh, since two, two years, uh, two, three years, the COVID-19 pandemic put additional pressure to the food system, threatening uh, to increase uh, malnutrition and food insecurity of, among vulnerable population. Uh, also, the major in inequality persists between women and men in terms of access to resources that can improve their life through agriculture, in particular, access to land and equipment, credit, access to market and advisories and support, and support service. The last 
cause or problem is the increase in public funding for agriculture has not led to sustainable increase in yield. In yield, as much of the public money is spent on inefficient fertilizers subsidized instead of public goods such as agricultural research. So, yes, do you still hear me? Sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. We Hello. see slide number four. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay. So uh, there is a need to to change the way we 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 have done still now by changing regional. Okay, you are interrupted, Kali. We got five uh, five uh, proposals. and political is affecting the region, which is not secular research innovation to improve resilience. The region need to move toward an integrated research approach at the landscape level to manage competing demand on land, water, and other natural resources due to rapid population growth. Uh, to increase sustainable structural change, With political mandate, and it is very for a question of the federating at the operational level, the field and the research actor for the construction of innovation and know how, uh, as well as the capitalization and scaling up of good practices. And mm -hmm the intersectoral mechanism that are taking shape in the targeted countries and the, at the six equals level. What are the, so uh, at the end of our uh, situation analysis, we came up with some proposal to some proposition of topic that can be used to address the challenges and to help uh, vulnerable people to cope with uh, the main shock they are facing in the in, in the soil. So we, we here we are displaying the the three main proposal we we came out uh, from our situ situation analysis. The first one is to uh, we need to combat the effect of climate change by uh, improving the capacity of for climate analysis, forecasting, and prediction by strengthening the capacity of country to implement and integrate climate smart agricultural research strategy to implement research and innovation to achieve carbon neutrality and by improving availability and access to resource through sustainable and climate change adapted management practice and tested and approved by uh, research. The second uh, proposal is to increase the sustainability of the productive base of the food system. So by establishing a research strategy to achieve land degradation neutrality within agri silvo pastoral uh, system to develop strategy for an integrated crop pest man and disease management and to develop strategy to accelerate the implementation uh, of restoration and anti desertification initiatives such as the green uh, the green green world initiative in the side the last one is the, to stand in the regional system for the development and scaling up of agricultural innovation by developing a digital advisory services for the prevention and management of agricultural and food crisis related to, effect, uh, to the effect of climate change and to develop decision support tool based on research results. So these are the main proposi proposition the, uh, our colleagues from the, the three uh, institutions made uh, in order to help people to, to cope with the, 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 the challenges we are facing in the, the side. So as uh, Stefan said, the next step will be to establish a roadmap and to, 
to 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 you know uh, I think by, by next week we will start to we we will be able to 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 achieve this uh, this step and to to go forward with the monitoring and evaluation and learning process. So uh, this is what I wanted to share with you this morning, and um, thank you for listening. Do you hear me? Thank you very much. Yes, Khalil, we hear you. Jackie, are you there? It seems we lost Jackie. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Khalil, for this. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Khalil, and thank you also for keeping time. You actually took 10 minutes. Um, and I think. Hello. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, hear you don't hear me? Can yeah, you hear I me? I can hear you. I can hear you, Jackie. Oh, no. Yes, I can see you, Jackie. You're but there. do you hear me? Yes, no? I also hear you. You are audible. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Kali, <laughs> please stop sharing the presentation. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you, Khalil, for keeping time. I don't know if you had that. And for yes. telling us what you've done in terms of theory of change and impact pathways. So we want to start the Mentimeter question. We had three questions for your topic, Khalid. Uh, let's see, the first one. Does the TCIP approach address the needs of actors in, in food systems sufficiently? That is the question uh, out of what you've heard from Khalid's presentation. I know you mentioned it's still a work in progress that will be refined in the coming weeks. But do you think that the approach he presented um, can address, can, can help us address the needs of actors in food systems sufficiently? Please have your say. Do give us your comments or inputs. And again, I think thank you, uh, CM team, for uh, loading the multimeter uh, URL also on the chat. Let's hear what you think, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate your inputs. Yes, I see a comment in the chat indicating that the North African group uh, are delayed in starting. Yes, we also appreciate that, but today, which would be comparable is we are able to listen from the WEA team and the working groups uh, from, um, from the three aspects that we have uh, indicated. Okay, a few more responses. We are at 30 out of 122. Let's see if we could get more responses. Do you think or uh, what do you think in terms of having the TCIP approach uh, addressing the needs of actors in the food system sufficiently? What are your thoughts? Does it or does it not? There is a bit stagnation now. <laughs> Jackie, what can we do to motivate the colleagues? Colleagues, we are 120 here, please. Oh, great, 41 now. We should offer some coffee for download. Oh, yes, we did this with beautiful pictures already. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, okay. colleagues, it's Stefan, a good I have unstable internet, so in case I disappear, just do not hesitate to carry on. Okay, yeah. we are at 42. At least let's get 50% of the participants. Stefan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you uh, okay. very well. All is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought I was speaking to myself. Oh, Siam oh, offered a coffee. coffee. <laughs> oh, imagine. 
a lovely espresso <laughs> freshly prepared in Bari. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Bad <Bye>, Carlos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we are at 45. We just need five more people to respond and then we can move to the next question. We're really keen to hear your thoughts on the presentation because remember this is the only way we get to interact with you and know what you think about what we are presenting. Three more people. I think they are all inspired for a fresh coffee, so they, they left the screen. <laughs> Colleagues, come back. We are 120 already, so please. I see for their coffee. We just include again here the Mentimeter link. Colleagues, you are all happy for the invitation yeah, from CM. Barely 50%. So one indeed pressed the wrong button because we lost one. No, no, stay in here. <laughs> so does the TCIP approach address the needs of actors in food systems sufficiently? What is your opinion? We need one more person to say something. I Just one more vote. <laughs> At least we need to get to a certain threshold to be able to make sense about your views or opinions on this. <laughs> Come on, you got a coffee now, you should be away. <laughs> <laughs> there, we made it. Awesome. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your input. Let's go to question number six. Awesome. It says, which other cooperation methods worked well for you? Which other cooperation methods worked well for you? So this is an open-ended question. Again, use the Mentimeter, then we'll see uh, what types of cooperation methods are there. Going once, going twice. Stefan, maybe explain how, how this question would relate to the concept, the communication. No, we're not doing communication to the theory, <laughs> theory of change and impact pathways. The point here is um, it's uh, Leap for FNSSA is a group of 35 institutions. We all have a network. We have colleagues. We established the West Africa EU Alliance, the North Africa EU Alliance, and all they are contributing with ideas to this uh, concept of a theory of change and impact pathway, but also to the overall uh, design of the future platform. The question here is indeed, um, are there other cooperation methods that we might have to consider in the cooperation? Um, and this is always connected also with a suggestion, please join our working groups and contribute. So aside of the theory of change and impact pathway, um development uh which other cooperation method uh seems to be relevant for you um could be applied uh in a cyclic programming approach and we see here now uh, some answers are very technical which is also good so working groups are mentioned seminars workshops of course this is for meeting uh, which is, uh, yes, it's, it's a methodological approach indeed also to consider this. So not only virtual uh, uh, meetings, but also physical meetings, for example. Network introduction. I don't know what this means. Perhaps it's more about um, bringing awareness into existing, uh, about existing networks. 
Um, yeah. But so then Stefan, just, mm -hmm. you also notice it's a word cloud. So the, the more words that are repeated, the mm -hmm. bigger the word becomes. So, so far, we're seeing networking as a, a cooperation method that is most preferred by the participants. Uh, I think at the beginning I saw travel, so I was just wondering how travel can be a method of cooperation, but assuming it's linked to having face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. And then I think also the handicap is when you're told to write one word to ensure that we have a one, uh, because the question is a one word answer. Then you end up people combining words, like I saw somebody combine, uh, in no, what those those what there's a combination of something about private partnerships, public private partnership. Uh, seem to hinge uh, the biggest me <laughs> methodology first on networking, then on meeting for a coffee as a second uh, big method. And then we are oh, actually meeting for a coffee has taken uh, a bigger <laughs> population uh, than networking. So it's a tie almost. Uh, field trips I see is also a big uh, partnership, collaboration, specific project. Uh, field trips is reported. It's repeated because of the spelling error. There's filed trips and field trips. I think it's one word. Okay, uh, workshops. I think is also there. I'm also it also seeing. appears oh. as if coffee is the main nutrient. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that must be the game changer for collaboration. <laughs> so That's we are at forty nine. We need at least one or two more people. Already awesome. I think we can get to sixty because it's a one word answer. And you already have examples of what type of words you could put in. Awesome. I, I find it quite remarkable, Jackie, isn't it, that indeed yeah. networking is uh, in, in the center, a side of meeting for, uh, for a, coffee. a coffee. And this means also that we are on the right track because this is an <laughs> issue. What is networking and then how could it be organized and what is the role of coffee in it? So, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Carlo has, Carlo has generously offered us pizza for lunch now, besides the coffee. I'm 60. not sure. Awesome, guys. We've, we've done. <laughs> I'm not sure whether this is allowed, this kind of promotion here from the Italian side. I love pizza, but please. <laughs> pizza and espresso. Awesome. So I see also collaboration, uh, partnership. Awesome. Field trips have also taken center stage. <laughs> Coffee oh, in Egypt. In Egypt, exactly. <laughs> oh, Somebody from fun. Ethiopia there, <laughs> please. Uh, this is a very interesting question, Jackie, isn't it? Look, we are 121 participants and we have already 71 feedbacks. One more, pick a word and let's see how our word cloud presents. <laughs> yeah. I think the ease of giving your input here has encouraged uh, us besides the coffee and the pizza that's offered from our Italian colleagues. One more answer, please. Awesome. Good. Uh, thank you very much. I think it is very clear our preferred method of cooperation. Okay, I think we lost uh, Jackie. So the next question would be, how else can the actors in food systems be adequately included into the platform's development process? Please use the Mentimeter and don't put your answers in the cloud. Put it in the Mentimeter, please. So click on the link in the chat and then uh, you will find your contributions displaced uh, here in the Mentimeter. So how else can actors in food systems be adequately included into the platform's 
development process because that's the process we are in and we want to ensure that as many actors as possible uh, for the sake of including as many perspectives and needs as possible uh, into the development of the platform that is where we are at currently so we suggested the cyclic programming approach we are pointing to the need of coordination coordination of different networks uh, but also coordination of knowledge management and uh, uh, knowledge management and communication framework so please give your contribution in the mentimeter click on the mentimeter in the chat and then you can give here a short contribution about how else can actors in food systems be adequately included into the platform's development process. As Jackie mentioned already in the introduction, uh, your contribution counts here. We will uh, read these contributions here and we try to include your suggestions into the process at the end of this year, Leap for FNSSA as a project will come to an end, but we will maintain this collaboration uh, process after the project. Um, and we are about to build a consortium that will maintain this process of the development of the platform. What is the platform? How should it look like? That's requested here. So how else? Can the actors in food systems be adequately included into the platform's development process? We are 123 participants currently. We have 28 feedbacks. Jackie, are you back in? Yes, I'm back. And thank you, Stefan, for Wonderful. holding the fort. Um, I think I saw an interesting answer. Someone said universities and then there was also capacity building at the beginning. Uh, I think that just needs an additional explanation because if you say how else are actors in food system uh, being adequately uh, included in the platform with the You are a bit interrupted, Chucky. There is a problem with the line. We cannot hear you properly. Uh, please, somebody is painting on the Mentimeter. Please don't do that. This might take data <laughs> as much as we appreciate creativity, but please don't paint here. Capacity. So, one word. Jackie, there is a slight problem. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. It's fine. Okay, maybe. No, it's again interrupted, Jackie. And um, am I clear now? No. Yes, now you are clear. <laughs> okay, so Stefan, just carry on. I'll try and log out and log in. Log in again. Okay, okay, okay. Do yeah. that. So, colleagues, also with regard to your um, answers here, very interesting. We have already fifty-two. That's great. Um, please have in mind, we uh, were able to listen to uh, the excellent presentation from David, which gives an insight in the development of the communication uh, concept chaired by Korov, by David Akana. Please join this working group and contribute, because in this communication concept, we do not only have to identify um those stakeholders who are relevant which is really not clear at all that's why we do this exercise to identify stakeholder categories and identify who are the players very concretely also in the west africa eu alliance as well as in the north africa eu alliance and we are um designing certain types of dialogues that are required. And I remember, I cannot see it now. Uh, Jackie mentioned this, that somebody uh, was saying something about how to include universities. Please join the working group number two in the WAEA and in the NAEA um, so that you can include these ideas into the communication uh, process. 
and into the communication concept. Uh, you can uh, join this group. I see this question here uh, in the chat by just contacting us, send us um, an email, and then we will uh, direct you to the working group uh, so that the chairs then uh, can take over. Uh, you find the context, uh, contacts from us uh, on the website and also here in the presentation uh, later, I will point to that. Um, I suggest um, we come to uh, the next question. Uh, we have uh, 58 responses here. Um, that's great, thank you, thank you so much. Um, let me just briefly check. Um, this was uh, the seventh uh, feedback. So we can move on to the next presentation. Uh, allow me to briefly share my screen and together with the question whether Belko is here. Belko, can you hear us? Are you online? Are you connected? Belko, Belko Diallo from Waskal. Are you online? Okay, I cannot. Uh, Stefan, it seems that uh, Mrs. Belko is not online. Siam, can you check for us if Belko is okay. the list of participants? Okay, thank you so much indeed. Then um, it seems that uh, there is a problem with the internet. Thank you, Gaetano, for this feedback. Uh, I suggest that we skip then this uh, presentation. Let me share just a few words. Um, the working group uh, number three in the West Africa EU Alliance uh, is dedicated to the question of data and knowledge management in the region. Um, how does data and knowledge management, how is it organized and where are uh, gaps? Uh, we had different discussions about that, interfaces between actors uh, in data and knowledge management, which has clearly to be distinguished. Data management is something different than knowledge management. We put it uh, for now all into, into one um, uh, topic. And uh, the suggestion uh, coming from Waskal then was to uh, write uh, already a theory of change uh, with impact pathways on this specific field. And the idea here with this working group number three is once this TCIP, the theory of change and impact pathway has been written, that this will feed into the general theory of change and impact pathway for the West Africa EU Alliance. And the same exercise uh, is uh, uh, ongoing in the North Africa EU Alliance because from both alliances as pilots, as I mentioned in the uh, previous presentation, are uh, meant to feed into the overall AU EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. Um, that's a pity that uh, Belko couldn't make it. Um, and there you see this uh, uh, cooperation. Is, it is challenging and it is quite normal that sometimes in meetings some, some colleagues cannot uh, connect uh, for different reasons, mostly that uh, the internet uh, does not work. Um, uh, but that is how life is. We continue and uh, we will be successful with this process. Um, and uh, if we have uh, patience uh, with each other and um, uh, con if we continuously contribute uh, to such documents like a theory of change and impact pathway on data and knowledge management, um, this takes a bit time, but if we are of goodwill and we continue contributing, uh, we will come to good results. Um, in that sense, please um, join this working group around um, Belco on the North Africa EU Alliance, the working group number three. May I um, ask uh, the CM team, Gaetano and Carlo, could you please share the uh, Mentimeter question number nine with us, please? I think, uh, Stefan, there's a question on the chat about uh, participants this. joining the working groups. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could just say a word again. I know you've said mm -hmm. contact us and then we'll direct you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh, yes, indeed. So joining the working group, you can contact us, Jackie and me, or um, you find also contact addresses on the website. Um, and as soon as we have a signal from you, an email, just send an email, we will direct you uh, to the working groups. Uh, and then the chairs will take over organizing, continuing uh, the process. Uh, around the theories of change and impact pathway and the communication concepts. So I see again this question. So please contact us, just send us an email in which working group you are interested in. Again, we have uh, four working groups. The first working group in both region, it's mirroring the, the, the uh, regions are mirrored. Uh, the first working group is on the writing of a general theory of change and impact pathway. The second working group is on writing a communication concept. The third working group is on writing a theory of change and impact pathway with a focus on data and knowledge management. And in the North Africa EU Alliance, the fourth working group is the one on clustering in the private sector. And if somebody who is around here who wants to initiate a working group on a, a private sector cluster in the West Africa EU Alliance, just send us um, uh, an email and then we make some arrangements with you that you can start uh, working here in the network. Um, and then we will also have a working group number four in the West Africa EU Alliance. So uh, please coming back to uh, the Mentimeter here, um, does the theory of change and impact pathway on data and knowledge management provide a solid basis for improving innovation systems in Africa and Europe. What is your opinion? So quickly just um, give your feedback via the Mentimeter. You have the link here in the chat, just uh, click on it. And um, then we have a clearer picture about your perspective on that. Very soon, um, as we mentioned already, um, end of this year, the Leap5 and SSA project uh, is ready to uh, transform into uh, a new consortium to maintain the development of the platform. And we will take all your inputs into this development before the end of this year and then thereafter uh, in the further development of the platform and the coordination infrastructure. So we have 29 uh, feedback. Please give us some more. you find in the chat the link to the Mentimeter. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, typing your email addresses in the chat. Um, allow me to briefly share mine that you uh, kindly could copy and then uh, you can send me uh, an email uh, with your wishes in which working group you want to contribute. And then um, Jackie and I together will uh, bring you into contact with the right people. So please, um, of course, you can share your emails in the chat, but please, uh, we are expecting from you uh, an email. Uh, to be sent to my address so that uh, we have you on the screen in our list. So please send us an email uh, with the mentioned address in the chat. Okay, thank you very much. We are 36. We still need more people to contribute to this question, but I also realize we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. We should have at um, uh, 10 minutes past the hour, we handed the floor over to Prudence and Henning. So just bear with us a little bit. I think uh, we're almost hitting 40. Please, uh, I think it is better that you take uh, Stefan's email address uh, so that you're able to indicate which group you want to join. And then we will coordinate that separately because if you just put your email on the chat box, we're not able to specifically know which group you want to join which working group uh, you want to join. Do you have any more responses? I think if you get three more, then we can move from this question and 
then you'd allow us time to hand over the floor to discussion aspect of our meeting today. I suggest so. So once uh, I can share the screen, we can uh, move ahead then. Okay. So just three more people, three more responses. Um, do you think our, does the TCIP on data and knowledge management provide a solid basis for improving innovation systems in both Africa and Europe? I just need to hear thoughts from two more people. It is indeed a challenge. I mean, we didn't have the presentation uh, yes. from Belco, but um, we hope very much that it was clear uh, what in general the role of a theory of change and impact pathways. And here it is indeed um, that you must please imagine uh, what could that mean in this specific this uh, this specific field of data and knowledge management. And as soon if you are interested in you joined the group around Belco, um, then you will get more details. You are connected. You can contribute to what Belco would have presented uh, this morning. So it's a pity that we could not have him here, but um, it's also not a drama because we are in the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I also have to encourage our North African participants to also indicate which groups, because we have a similar pilot uh, with the North African AU-EU Alliance as well. And I think as Stefan highlighted, with the exception of, um, with an addition working group on the private sector. And I think we've hit 40, so maybe we could stop there for this particular question. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think at this point, uh, Stefan, with your permission, I'd like to welcome Prudence and uh, Henning. Uh, to talk about dialogues for action. So I hand over the floor. I'm sorry, we are almost uh, 20 minutes out of time, Henning and Prudence. So bear with us to try and um, try and recover the time. Thank you. The floor so is you yours. You can <laughs> share your screen indeed. And colleagues who are writing their email addresses in the chat, thanks a lot, but please uh, send your email with your message again to my email address. I mentioned it several times now in the chat. The floor is yours, Prudence and Henning, please. Thank you very much, um, Stefan and Jackie. Am I audible? Yes, you yes, are, you thank are. you. Perfect. Um, South Africa is afternoon, so good afternoon, everybody. But anyway, <laughs> maybe to keep the essence of the meeting, I should say good morning uh, <laughs> to everybody. Uh, my name is Prudence Makura, and I work for the National Research Foundation in South Africa. I'm making this presentation together with my colleague Henning, who's um, based in Germany, working for the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food. Prudence, um, yes? Prudence are you able to put your slide on presentation? I should be able to do that. Okay, where do I go to do that? There's a button usually at the bottom. Why is this thing now free? Because for me, it shows it as... Um, wait, Jackie, can you just give me a second? Sure. Okay, let me do it here. Is it on presentation mode? Okay, let me maybe take out this screen because I've got them. Um, greens with me here. Okay, I'm back now. I was just unplugging the other screen so that I can work with only this screen. Let me see if I can put it again in presentation mode. Is it on presentation mode now? Yes, now it is. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so where was I? I think I was introducing ourselves. Um, so together with Henning, we work on dialogues uh, for action. So the idea actually is just to engage uh, stakeholders um, to work towards building this uh, joint platform. 
Uh, the idea of today's presentation is not going to be a long presentation because we are more interested in um, having inputs from the participants rather than us uh, giving you an overload of information. And I think also, um, colleagues, you've had a lot of um, information from the previous presenters on what has really happened with um the activities that Leap for FNSSA has engaged in. So I'm just gonna outline how we have uh, engaged the stakeholders. And then afterwards, Henning will come in uh, to get more inputs um, from your side as, as participants. When I move the screen, Stefan, are you able to see my second, yes, my second screen? Yes, it works, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, Obviously, um, to work on dialogues um, for action, we need to speak to the relevant um, uh, stakeholders and get the stakeholders to be part of the process and to give inputs on how the process um, should be carried out. So the very first idea is how do we mobilize um, the stakeholders? Um, I think Stefan has already indicated that we went with a pilot of two subregions, and this has got nothing to do with prioritization. So it's not because we are prioritizing this two subregion over other um, uh, regions. Um, so we have two pilots, the North and the West Africa, as as, as the piloted subregions. And um, what we've decided to do was to have basic principles going into the mobilization process. Um, we needed to ensure that, firstly, we do not um, reinvent the wheel. So the idea is not to um, repeat everything that has already been done by, by the stakeholders. So we are aware that a lot has been done on the ground, uh, that there is good work that has happened. So our idea was how can we build on the existing activities? How can we build on what has been previously achieved? Um, how can we bring the efforts of different uh, stakeholders together into one and partner? As, as, as one platform. Um, so the overall idea basically colleagues is just to enhance what we're doing is to strengthen and is to consolidate all the actions that uh, we are all um, uh, busy with. And also when we're talking about uh, mobilizing um, actors, we realize that um, we also need to look at mobilizing resources. So it's not just only about uh, mobilizing the people or the organizations, but it's also about the resources that will drive you know, this platform uh, forward. Um, also, we needed to ensure that we engage in an open and a very inclusive consultative engagement. And this is why everything that we do, we involve you colleagues to be part of the process. So every decision that we're making, every idea that we have on the table, we share with the stakeholders, you help us shape you know, the process because the very idea of a platform that can work at the end is the idea of ownership. So is this your platform? It is not our platform. It is not the Leap, of, Leap for FNSSA platform. It is the platform for Africa and Europe um, uh, partners to come together and partner. So these are the basic principles of why we're doing this. We want everybody to be involved. We want your ideas, hence the idea of Mentometer. That's the reason why we are raising questions to you, colleagues, so that you can help us shape the process, shape the platform, uh, and shape the way forward. So what have we done uh, so far? Um, when approaching the two sub-regions, um, we realized that uh, we needed to engage at different levels because the regions are different, right? So um, the, the very first important thing was to look at who are the stakeholders that we need to engage with. And um, we realized that when we engage the West African colleagues, they are very much quite organized into um, these different um, associations and alliances and so forth. So we realized that it would be better to use regional bodies when we engage with West Africa. So uh, for West African colleagues, we've been engaging through uh, many different uh, regional bodies, some of which are highlighted on the slides. And you've heard colleagues as well from some of these uh, uh, 
um, regional bodies who have been involved in some of the working groups. Um, so the idea is not to say that individual entities or individual uh, or individuals cannot participate without being part of uh, the regional bodies. So this is the idea of why we have the working groups is to ensure that the participation of everybody is there, is to ensure that we open participation. We do not want a close knit of uh, stakeholders who are only forming part of the working group. So the working group are quite open. Everybody is really invited to join the working groups. It's just that for coordination purposes, it has been easier for us as for FNSSA to do the regional bodies approach when we uh, engage with West Africa. And for North Africa, it's multiple stakeholders uh, that, we, that we are engaging with. And some of the stakeholders are mentioned on the slides that you see, um, that you see there. So the way in which we started um, was to actually engage in workshops, like use workshops as an instrument to engage stakeholders. Um, this was before COVID um, hit. So um, we started firstly with uh, North Africa uh, workshops. And um, unfortunately, when we had to organize other workshop that we, workshops that we had planned for, um, COVID started and um, there were so many travel restrictions, as you know, colleagues, and there was no way in which we could have physical face-to-face -face meetings um, with the stakeholders. So we had to change the plan and move into virtual uh, meetings. And we've had numerous uh, virtual meetings with different uh, stakeholders to date. Uh, to collate the, the information. And also we realized that perhaps it will also be better to have an online collaborative platform where everybody can just log in and leave a comment and you know, be part of the process, part of the writing of these documents that have been presented to you uh, since this morning. So through the workshops that we've had, a lot has happened. So when we engaged in workshops, we started by trying to identify the most pressing thematic priorities of each subregion. Um, so I just sampled here, colleagues, this is not everything. This is just to give you a taste of some of the issues that came out. So for example, for the most pressing thematic priorities for North Africa, those are the issues that uh, came out of our consultations. And for West Africa, those are the issues that came out. And when you look, when you really look into these things and you drill down into these things, you realize that there are actually commonalities, you know, between some of the issues that are raised by North African colleagues and issues that are raised by West African colleagues. And the last column, that you see there is just an example of some of the um, commonalities that came out. When we were, when we were doing uh, one of the menti uh, Mentimeters, I think it was the one after Khalid's presentation on the on the theory of on the general theory of change, there was a question that was raised on the chat that the gender perspective has been left out um, of the whole process and. I went back and checked at uh, you know some of the issues that came out when we identified the pressing thematic uh, priorities. And for West Africa, actually, gender has been highly emphasized. Um, for example, um, there was an issue that was raised regarding um, uh, including issues of gender, youth, and social equality, targeting special needs of women, farmers, processors, and agro-entrepreneurs, and support for youth employment. So such issues have come out. Um, it's just that uh, perhaps with the slides, we are not raising all the issues um, that have been um, collated. So once we had the most pressing thematic uh, priorities, um, we further engaged the stakeholders on the critical factors for creating an enabling collaborative environment between the different actors. What would be the, um, the type of a platform that colleagues would want to see? And yet again, we had responses coming from the North African colleagues and responses coming from the West African colleagues. And they were quite similar actually with what they would like to see. I mean, issues of multi-stakeholder partnership, 
platform whereas um, uh, colleagues stressed issues of joint learning, um, access, easy access to information, and issues of co-creation, um, uh, true partnership, a balanced uh, partnerships. And one of the most important issues that was raised a lot was actually the issue that Stefan highlighted when he was presenting the PMC, um, is the issue of the research uptake. You know, how do we increase the use of science-based recommendations? Um, and they, the request was that the platform needs to ensure that it looks into this issue and addresses, um, addresses this issue. So a lot of uh, ideas came out and, um, oh yes, and is, that's part of the reason why we also need to mobilize for resources uh, because colleagues from both North and West Africa were worried about the appropriate resources and incentive systems for such a platform. Um, so we realized that there is a need that we uh, prioritize the resource mobilization as much as we prioritize the mobilization of, of actors. And then um, I just wanted to here highlight the collaborative platform um, that currently exists, where all these documents that colleagues have presented on, where all the working groups, both for North and West Africa, uh, are working. And so this is the platform that we are all using. So if you join the working groups, you will be expected to also work through this, uh, this platform. So all this information that we are sharing with you today, it actually exists in this um, collaborative platform. And what we've done recently was to actually also just to reach a wider uh, spectrum of stakeholders. Uh, we just also worked on a survey that we seek circulated to all the North and, and, and West Africa stakeholders. Um, regarding the work that the three working groups are doing, you know, so that you can also provide your inputs, uh, provide your, your ideas, and this can be taken into consideration. So this is the platform and this, the, and this the, um, the link um, to get to that, uh, to get to the platform. Okay, so this is, this is what we've done um, so far. So the plan is that um, now we really need to get to the nitty gritties of this, of, of really establishing this, um, this platform. So um, the Good Morning 2 uh, that is planned for the 3rd of February, uh, we really look into the core development issue. Um, so we will, during that meeting, we will, in a nutshell, present um, the things that we would like to achieve, um, what we desire, and you've already heard uh, some of the ideas that we have of how to re how to achieve the things that we want to achieve through the using the PMC uh, model. So you've you've already heard um, these ideas, but uh, for the meeting on the third of February, we would really like now to get more concrete ideas coming from you colleagues so that we can uh, match all these ideas together and have uh, the documents finalized and really launch um, this platform. So one of the most, like I said, it's not just about mobilization of uh, actors, it's also about mobilizing resources. So we see the need of really focusing on the first cluster network, which is the funders network. And we've reserved Good Morning Five to really engage the, um, the potential funders uh, for such a network. So the idea with Good Morning Five is to try to talk to potential funders, uh, be it national funding uh, agencies, be it ministries uh, and so forth, you know, to engage them uh, to look at the type of um, collaborative networks that can work for, so collaborative network that can work for funders. Um, how should such a network be established and be developed? How can we concretize uh, such a funders network within uh, this platform? So the meeting of the um, 15th of February is really the very first step that we are taking to reaching out you know, to the funders to build this um, this uh, cluster network of, 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 of funders. I think I will leave it at that because this was just to, for you, just to frame 
so that you can understand where we are coming from and how we are approaching all the stakeholders and how these working groups uh, that we are working with have uh, been established. Um, and also just to emphasize that we need your involvement. We need you to be part of the process because this is our platform. All of us here today, this is our platform and we should all work together in, in developing it. So I will leave I will leave the conversation at that for now and ask um, Henning uh, to come in and take over with the Mentimeter question that we've prepared um, uh, for this session and also some of the questions that we would like to put forward uh, to get your ideas um, on this. Uh, Henning, thank you very much, Prudence. Now before we go into the the Mentimeter question, I'd like to ask uh, Jackie and Stefan, how much time do we actually have? Are we running out of time or are we fine? Yes, yes we are running out of time, but we gave 10 minutes for the Mentimeter question. If you're yeah. able to do it within 10 minutes, then we'll try and catch up in the next session. Yes, I think we can just go through the Mentimeter question now and then we can go on. Okay. Thank okay. You. Mm -hmm. So please... Um, uh, our have to, have colleagues, to we'd be happy just to have the question now. Okay. So, um, for all of you, please, we have now seen this uh, presentation of Prudence and uh, of the other presenters on our long-term cyclic programming. Um, and now we would like to see, see actually your estimation. So there's one participant on now. Thank you very much. So please just give us your opinion. Also based on the presentation you just saw from. Uh, can we have please again the link to the Mentimeter in the chat? Um, Jackie, while this is going on, would you allow, allow some comments by participants? Okay, yes, the CM team, I think they were aware. Uh, you'd be able to manage um, people who've raised their hands, right? Yes, please. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, please be free to just raise your hand if you have comments. We have a bit of time. Could you just please um, uh, give your input to this question and if you would like to also do the questions we had before, because of course of because of these many people who are now in this meeting it's not always easy for us, but please raise your hand and and give your opinion. Let's see. Yeah. Anybody who would like to take the floor? If, if they raise their hands, uh, Henning, and you call on them, then Siham will be able to unmute their mics. So we need their hands risen fast for us to be able to manage this. Oh, no. I cannot see a hand. No hands are raised with the people. Uh, please go ahead with your mentimeter. Everyone is free to, to talk. There is a hand hanging. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who is it? Please just Saida. say that. We have a hand from Saida. Oh. Um, I'm so sorry if I just pronounced it. <laughs> please, could you raise your voice? Hello? Yes, please speak. Yeah. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this um, program because it came at the right time uh, for me. I am a researcher at Royal Cultural University, UK, 
and I'm a facilitator of an um, innovation platform. And then um, I can see there's a gap in the research uptake, especially in the pharma led research, there's a disconnect. And uh, I would like to be part of this um, um, platform, also particularly for Nigeria, because um, I've been trained to facilitate uh, innovation platform, pharma led, pharma groups especially local innovation. So I'll be part of this. So it's a great initiative um, for this um, coming up with this kind of platform. Thank you. I'm a registered animal scientist. So my focus is in uh, poultry, aquaculture and all that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mary Idowu, would you like to give your comment, please? Okay, thank you very much. I'm very glad for the opportunity to be part of this new move. I am a soil scientist. Um, one challenge that I have re recognized is the issue of fertilizers. Just for like for South uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, including Nigeria, the fertilizer usage is very low. And not only that, we don't have the crop specific, soil specific fertilizers in the country. And it is so difficult persuading farmers even to use fertilizer. Even consumers, we say they are not eating food produced by fertilizer. So I see this as one of the uh, issues that need, needs to be promoted. And coming from outside and also Targeting resources towards this will surely transform farming, agricultural production in Nigeria. Because with the climate change, the nutrient resources is uh, reducing in the soil because rainfall now comes in large volumes over a short period of time. So we lose a lot of uh, nutrients for soil under cultivation. And also, we also need to look at the issue of uh, conserving water. The drought is another challenge. So there's the need to look at how to uh, conserve our rainfall than leaving everything to just go back to oceans. Researchers have come up with uh, some recommendations, but so difficult for them to persuade the people in the area of government you know, to take into this. So I see this, um, our platform as a good one that is capable of transforming agricultural production in the continent. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please also go on using the Mentimeter. Yes, please. Jackie, do we still have time? You have three minutes. Okay, so the, the hand raising. Yeah, so we have uh, here Fury. Fury, please. I cannot see the name. Hi, uh, I'm a social innovator in, in South Africa. So I would like to add on what Mary is saying in, on the issue of fertilizers. I think, Mary, the problem that we're having in Africa regarding fertilizers. It's just an indication that we need to move to sustainable agriculture and move away from using chemical fertilizers. So I think it's a problem that we need to look into as the whole continent. And the solution, it's one, us all moving into sustainable agriculture and the use of organic fertilizers to ensure that agriculture does not begin above the ground on the plant it begins on taking care of the soil and making sure that our soils are healthy and are sustainable for long term. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have Agnes Kirabo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Agnes Kirabo once again is my name. I'm from East Africa. We shall be watching and uh, waiting with a lot of enthusiasm uh, for the program to, to cross to this side of Africa. 
I have uh, two comments. Comment number one is that uh, now agriculture and all innovations are no longer for farmers and no longer for producers but the entire ecosystem, including the consumers, but also the politicians, uh, um, uh, uh, and also the dynamics that uh, are, happen, uh, are happening within the food environment. So I'm very happy with the platform because of that broadness, and we should continue uh, broadening and bringing you on board beyond the scientific scientists. <laughs> to the social, the behavior change um, uh, scientists and the like, such that uh, all the perspectives are, are covered. Uh, to Mary, you know the comment about a fertilizer use in Africa is generic. And uh, I know that as a soil scientist, you know that the fertilizer, the fertilizer needs are specific. So, you know, having a blanket, and we have had that blanket condemnation as Africa in regarding to low fertilizer use. The question is which fertilizer? And who said that we have a deficiency where? Because the deficiencies are not uniform. I submit. Thank you, Henning. I think we need to stop the discussion there. Thanks. Thank you very input. much. Yes. Yeah. So, and also uh, the team in Bari, please allow us to share the screen okay, for the last Henning, slides. Are you happy with the Mentimeter? Yes, I'm happy with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> so again, also uh, a big thanks for uh, this session, Prudence uh, and Henning about the Dialogues for Action, a very substantial element in the second phase of the program and innovation management cycle. So um, we are at the end of our first uh, good morning, good morning number one in the stakeholder forum from model to practice organized from LEAP for FNSSA. Um, I do not see now uh, who is still raising her or his hands, um, we would like to just, um, in a way, not summarize on our own, but with you together, what are, are the spontaneous takeaways from today's discussion. And we are looking for, let's say, three or four person who just give us in one minute uh, a brief feedback. What is it that you uh, take with you uh, back home from this first good morning that we had together? Um, and uh, what could be perhaps your contribution uh, in this process? Um, so could uh, the team from Siam or Jackie please help me? Um, is there somebody who wants to give a brief feedback on that? I think uh, perhaps Irene is also here or George. Uh, please take the floor and okay. give us a brief but, uh, feedback. Agnes, I think you can lower your hand because you just gave your input. There was also Francesco Carnevale who raised his hand uh, times ago. Mm -hmm. So please now, what is your spontaneous takeaway that you want to share um, from today's discussion? The floor is yours, please activate your microphone. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm Francesco, the program director of SRI 2030, mm -hmm. which is a project promoted by um, the Downforce Trust with based in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And um, I thank you all for uh, this amazing presentation. And um, my biggest takeaway is that I really appreciate the, um, um, this cyclic style, cyclic um, feature of the program, um, which I think is very important for, uh, for it to be effective. And uh, the, um, the concept of uh, um, approaching different clusters of, um, of interest and, um, and try to link uh, each other in order to, um, to reach common goals. But for sure, I, I think uh, this is something that is currently pro uh, problematic. And if this actually can, can happen, uh, it's going to bring major changes. 
then I'm going to speak from my, uh, my own perspective because uh, um, SRI, we, we deal with uh, the system of rice intensification, so we deal uh, with rice. Uh, but we, we are also trying to do something similar because uh, there are SRI networks all around the world. Uh, there are many in Africa, especially in West Africa, uh, but as you can uh, imagine, most of them they are in uh, Asia. Um, and our job is also to try to link these to each other. So I think um, your effort uh, to, to link all these uh, different realities in uh, Africa and Europe can um, can go together with uh, with our own uh, and i'm looking forward to um, to understand better how we can uh, um, somehow collaborate in future so that we, we reach our common goals so wonderful uh, wonderful francesco thank, thank you so much for this very positive feedback from your side and indeed you can also join the group on the private sector cluster and the north africa eu alliance to develop this a bit further the cluster um, approach but you can also join together with the other participants here the other working groups i already received several emails thank you for that uh, please check in the chat again my email address send us uh, your feedback to which working group uh, you want to contribute again uh, thank you very much francesco for your perspective since um, we have uh, here in Germany now uh, one o'clock two o'clock um, uh, um, sorry no there is we have one o'clock here and we should come uh, to an end now um, is there perhaps a last statement I'm not sure George are you there or is Irene here you might want to share yeah. a last point and then George you're here please yes, the floor yes. is yours I'm here. Thank you very much, Stefan. And um, sorry, George. Stefan, maybe I'll... you stop sharing the screen so that you're able to see uh, the participants in full. Okay. Yes. Thanks sure. For a moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So, again, thanks very much, Stefan and team, for organizing these good morning sessions and. Uh, I would like to say that it's been very enlightening. Um, the overall goal is, of course, to set up a, a platform for research and innovation that enables Africa and Europe to ensure that we are able to address the challenges in food and nutrition security and sustainable um, agriculture. And I believe that the way we are proceeding with these sessions would eventually enable us to make impacts. We are proceeding along the paths of um, participatory and um, interactive, all-inclusive um, sessions. And in that process, I believe that all stakeholders, um, those that are represented um, in this um, uh, session will be able to contribute meaningfully for us to have a very sustainable platform. And so um, personally, my experience is very positive. And I know that um, at the end of the five day sessions, we'll be able to um, deliver um, to expectation and we'll have a sustainable platform for FNSSE. So thank you very much. And let's continue and hope for the best in the coming sessions. Thanks. Thank you so much, George, for these very encouraging uh, words. Thank you so much. And uh, colleagues, I uh, suggest that we are coming now indeed um, to an end of this uh, first good morning. Uh, we are a little bit over the time, but I would say in general, we were not that bad in uh, managing uh, the time for today's session. I have a problem here. Uh, to reach the full screen mode of our presentation. We first of all would like to thank um, all the colleagues who contributed uh, to today's good morning, uh, the speakers, the facilitators, the technical and logistics support from Siambadi uh, in the background from the invitation over registration now here organizing this Zoom event. I would say this deserves a big round of applause for the colleagues uh, who organized that for us. It was a success, I would say. Uh, so thanks uh, a lot for that. 
Um, please be all uh, aware, uh, we want to meet you in the next good morning. Uh, we came together here, we started this process three years ago. Let's continue this co process together, let's grow our network. Again, you have in the chat my email address, uh, address us via this email address. Uh, and we will connect you with the existing working groups. If you want to establish additional working groups, uh, simply let us know this is a growing network. This is a growing process from model to practice. You have been informed already. What is the model? Where are we coming from? What means the practice is up to you and we support as lead for FNSSA you in this process. Um, as we mentioned already at the end of this year, we are about to form a consortium as a next milestone in the development of the platform. The next meeting is on the 3rd of uh, February. Uh, so in two days uh, ahead on the 3rd of February, again at nine o'clock uh, GMT, we will meet again and then we will talk about the EU platform, AU EU platform uh, co-development uh, process with interesting presentations on the private sector cluster. We didn't have time today for that. So you can expect this presentation uh, then on the 3rd of February, our next meeting and further discussions, dialogues for action and a more uh, detailed idea about how we can move on um, together. So um, in the name of LEAP for FNSSA and in particular uh, the Working Group Actors Alliances and Policies, and colleagues, uh, we want to thank you. Jackie, uh, you also um, have uh, uh, some last words and then we uh, would like to close this meeting. Jackie, please, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. For me, it's just to appreciate the participants, especially those who stayed with us since the beginning to the end. And thank you for sacrificing your four hours just to listen to our pro projection of what we see is going to be uh, not just valuable, uh, but um, a platform that is useful to us. So I truly appreciate your presence. Thank you for staying with us. Please join us on Thursday for Good Morning too, as Stefan has asked. And I just want to conclude by saying that, please remember that to uh, participate in Good Morning too, you need to register and get a separate link for that as well. So do not, hesitate if you've not registered for Good Morning 2, please uh, see the website. I think Siam put the address for registration on the chat and you'll also get a different link the same way you got for today. So thank you very much and over to you, Stefan. Thank you, uh, Stefan. Well, yes, please, you Gaetan. Not, yeah, I'm not able to offer coffee to everyone, but uh, can we take a, a, a family photo of all the okay. participants? Oh, so, yes. And for that, I will stop sharing the screen. Uh, and indeed, thanks a lot. That's very important. Let's have a family photo. I can kindly ask you all to turn on your video or your camera. So show us whether this was a good morning. <laughs> wake up, wake up. <laughs> wake up perhaps next time we can ask you all to to raise your mug or however you take your tea and coffee and we have this in the coming family photo of good morning number two on the 3rd of february yeah. so this looks great uh we nearly have all here uh at least on my screen mm, firi and mary idobu is it possible to show up and then the colleagues from the siam hey. party team will make a photo yes and I assume you make several photos because Zoom doesn't allow to show all in one. So oh, yeah. please uh, have your video device on for the photo. Um, in the meantime, uh, we wish you a lovely and a good afternoon. Thanks a lot uh, for joining uh, this meeting, for joining this network. You are the network now, uh, together with those who joined the network already three years ago. Uh, we will continue this path, send us an email and we will connect you with the working groups. Um, excellent that you have been here today. We were partly and in some phases more than 130 person. Um, tell your colleagues about this process. Um, send the link to the registration for the second good morning session and then perhaps we will be more. 
Yes, Stefan. And also just to acknowledge the colleagues from FAR, our coordination for the project as well, who have been present and with us throughout this, um, uh, this good morning, as well as the um, organization process. So we also thank you for your un unconditional support. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, Gaetano, you let us know when you have yeah. when you had all the photos, <laughs> then you're able to stop smiling and leave the yeah. room. You're done. Don't stop smiling. Don't stop smiling. <laughs> Thank you all. See you all on okay. Thursday. Thank Take you. good care. Third of February, Bye. nine o'clock general mean Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Take bye. care. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. The CM team, uh, are you closing the meeting?